to the Historic Preservation Commission for the City of Ojai uh, here on April 14th, 2022, just a little after five o'clock, just trying to take roll. So, <coughs> Sherry, welcome back. Thank you. Um, roll call, please. Cherry Gins? Here. Vice Chair Convery? Here. Commissioner McHatton? Commissioner McHatton? You're on mute. And Commissioner Prabor. I think the Cindy Convery. Commissioner McHatton, we're calling roll. Is everyone still muted? Okay. All right. And then Prabor, uh, not sure. And Commissioner James is absent. Thank you. Okay. Is, is it Cindy Convery Prabor? Apparently. Can you guys hear me? I'm in the car. Yeah, we can hear you. I okay. can hear you. Okay, I'm on. I'm in the car. Is that the sp speaker out of the of the council meeting at the council meeting the other night when it was outside and then eventually it seemed like it came back to normal. Oh, uh, maybe James said there was some kind of discrepancy. Okay, so we'll do the pledge of allegiance. Would everybody please stand with me and. Place your right hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. After umpiring baseball for 20 plus years, I always want to say play ball immediately following that, but so that's what we'll do tonight. Okay, uh, public communications. Public communications is the time set aside during the Historic Preservation Commission meeting for members of the public to address the Historic Preservation Commission on items of city business other than scheduled agenda items. Matters raised at this time may be briefly discussed by the commission and will generally be referred to staff and or placed on subsequent agenda. Under state law, other than for emergency items, no action can be taken at this meeting on those items. So, Sherry, do we have public comments that we need to take at this time? Uh, anybody on Zoom? A microphone. So, so to, to answer your question, this is for public comments on items not listed on the agenda, okay? So if you have a speaker card that you put a number on it, such as item number four, then we will have public comments uh, at the beginning of the hearing, or towards the beginning of the hearing on that, that item. Okay. okay? Any other questions? Okay. Um, Yep, I, right there, I oh. didn't get that. Oh. Um, okay, uh, current agenda items then. Uh, number one is the minutes of the February 28th, 2022 special meeting. Uh, that was a meeting in which the uh, HPC called special meeting in order to uh, receive the historic resources report. And then uh, if desired for the commissioners to uh, share uh, their feelings on the recommendation for the option that was options that were proposed. Uh, do we have any commissioners with any questions or any changes to item number one? Not me. No. Okay, so two out of three people I can see. Uh, Commissioner Convery, do you have or Commissioner Prebor, do you have any changes? No, I do not. Okay. Okay, would anyone like to make a motion then for approving? Chair, Honor, you can actually have both minutes in one motion. Oh, I can? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, now that, we've done, now that we've done item number one, let's go to item number two. Item number two is the minutes of March 10th, 2022. This is a regularly scheduled meeting uh, that was held that date. Um, Uh, 
I I don't have any changes to the meeting. Cindy, no, no Vice Chair. Me. All good. Nope. Commissioner McCatton. All good. All good. Commissioner Prebor. No changes. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion then to approve yeah. both minutes? I make a motion to approve both minutes. A second. I second that amendment. Okay. Sounds like Jenny. Uh, do we need a roll call? Yep. Akins. Yes. Condry. Yes. McCatton. Yes. Prebor. Yes. Thank you. Great. Voting is unanimous. Um, can I ask a follow-up question to something that was in the minutes? Um, okay, so one thing that was in the uh, second minutes was a suggestion in that discussion uh, about putting uh, ad hoc, uh, HPC ad hoc to, uh, group together to meet with the planning commission ad hoc group. And last sentence in the uh, bottom paragraph on page four of six, uh, it says staff will take the request to the city manager for pr approval of a joint meeting. So I'm just, did we get that yet? You guys have been very busy. It's not a high priority. Still working on that. Yes. Great, great. Thank you. Okay, then we will move on to uh, item number three. Want to do disclosures? Yes, thank you. We may have some of those. Thank you. Okay, disclosure of site visits from any of the commissioners. Um, I went by the theater and downtown visited the library, looked at the paint colors on, on the surrounding buildings, particularly the landmark buildings. That's my disclosure. Okay, great. Uh, Commissioner M McCatton, any disclosures? Well, I, I live in downtown. I'm constantly walking by our um, our landmarks, but nothing specific except admiring them. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you, Commissioner Prebor. Yeah, um, uh, the same thing. I'm I nothing specific. Yes, Kitty Corner across the street. Um, do we fix that speaker in any way? Yeah, that's going to be tough. Yeah, I don't. Especially if we have someone tonight. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yes. So, so just th so those that are here uh, understand, uh, we're having. I'm. We are having a hard time understanding the. Uh, two commissioners who are uh, on Zoom, uh, there sounds like their voice is coming out of the speaker that's in the uh, entryway there, and it's not clear to us. And we were hoping to get that before um, proceeding with the hearing because it's going to be very tough to understand them otherwise. So just a little pause at the moment till we figure out. That's the tech guy. Keep talking. Have, Keep talking. I have Gina speaker. Uh, Gina, could you? Hello. Oh, magic. Hi, Hi everybody. Keep talking. <laughs> I am. Um, how's everyone doing this evening? Everyone good? We're hearing you better and better. Yeah. What about Jenny? Huh? Jenny, chime in. Jenny? She's at Lake Casitas. It does, it does say Jenny now instead of saying uh, Cindy. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's still muted from just the curve on that TV. Jenny, could you speak for us, please? She is muted. Yeah. That's better. It's gonna sound like it. Ken, Brian, can you hear me clearly? I'm just still in the car. Oh, yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. James, much improved. Thank you. Okay. We we ready to go? Ready to go? Okay. We will proceed then. Uh, first off, we will have a staff report on item number three. Thank you, Chair Aikens and Commissioners. Um, item three is work permit twenty one dash zero zero six, and it's for facade restoration and repairs to historic landmark twenty six, which is the Ojai Playhouse Theater. The project description includes replacement of the existing marquee, 
restoration of the existing Ojai Playhouse neon sign, removal and replacement of existing windows and doors on the north facing elevation, opening the existing quatrefoil and patching painting and restuccoing of the walls um, to the theater. The applicant proposes to remove the existing marquee and install um, a new marquee with internal illumination and painted metal housing. The illumination is white LED and is would be shielded with white polycarbonate plastic panels. The marquee letters are three-dimensional. Replacing the existing marquee on the playhouse will not alter the structural design of the building. The marquee will fit above the existing band, allowing the band itself to be fully exposed as it provides definition between the upper and lower portions of the building. The proposed marquee is, um, would be narrower, shorter, and longer than the existing one and have one fewer lines of copy than the existing. Uh, per the Ojai Municipal Code and Terminal Loom internal illumination is allowed pursuant to approval by the director. For this project, um, the director is forwarding the internally illuminated marquee to the commission, as you see here. Um, and it's as part of the project as a whole. And the existing Ojai Playhouse neo neon sign is proposed to be restored to its original state. The restoration includes repair and replacement of electrical parts, as well as the use of a noble gas referred to as Krypton. This um, letter here is an example of the, the repaired um, cabinet for individual letters. The noble gas filled tubes um, would be shielded with translucent les lenses. There are two examples here. One is a little bit um, more opaque than the other. I think that's the right word. Um, the metal housing is proposed to be painted a, um, a gray called Playhouse Gray. The overall sign and size of the individual letters are proposed to remain the same size as the ones that are existing. The plans identify that this noble gas is proposed to provide a lower level of illuminance than um, conventional neon, and I did see somebody walk in with, an, uh, with a conventional neon sign this evening that might be shown later. Um, this uh, Krypton gas would be in the tube as shown in this um, sample letter, and it would provide a soft yellow-green glow um, in, within a, a metal cabinet ch or channel letter, I guess it's referred to as. The Ojai Municipal Code includes that artificial illum illumination of signs is to be designed to the extent possible to avoid, avoid negative impacts on surrounding properties. Illuminated signs are not to use more than 10 candle power per square foot illumination measured at the sign face. The plans indicate that the candle power for the Ojai Playhouse sign will be um, projected at approximately 0.1% of the maximum allowable candle power, therefore obviously not exceeding um, the, the limits of the municipal code. All existing windows and doors on the north facing elevation of the theater are proposed to be removed and replaced. The replacement window frames are aluminum clad wood painted Ojai gray. The replacement door um, for the restaurant is also aluminum clad painted Ojai grade, uh, gray with a glass center. The two theater doors are proposed to be replaced with frameless glass doors in a fixed panel system. The glass is low iron clear starfire tempered safety glass and the doors are, um, would have a satin stainless um, steel hardware finish. The existing quatrefoil is identified as an object of record for this landmark and the quatrefoil is located at the top of the facade facing Ojai Avenue, and it's centered within the existing symmetrical um, arched detail. The quatrefoil is proposed to remain but be opened so you can see through to the sky, and part of the um, object of record is the, um, what is it called? Um, the grate or grill that's within the quatrefoil, and that's re that is proposed to remain, and the Quatrefoil would be repainted Clark White would, as uh, along with the walls of the building and that would be eliminating the, um, 
Thank you. The accent color, that, that makes it stand out right now. Um, the existing band defining the top and lower portion of the building is not part of the original design. It may have been added with other facade alterations between 1965 and 66. This concrete element is proposed to be repaired and painted Clark white to match the stucco wall color. This is the band that I mentioned that will now be exposed fully with the existing marquee removed. The stucco wall surfaces are proposed to be patched and the upper portion applied with an overcoat of sand finish, hand troweled textured stucco and the low, lower portion would be applied with an overcoat of smooth finish steel troweled stucco finish. The upper and lower sections um, are to be painted Clark white. The white stucco walls are part of the objects of record. Um, Additional restoration that's not visible from Ojai Avenue include a new metal gate on the east side of the building, painted Ojai gray, proposed to provide security and allowing screening of the rear yard area on the east side of the building. An existing courtyard at the rear side is proposed to be um, uh, to receive new concrete paving, and new concrete paving and steps are also proposed to provide accessibility to the theater and the accessory, accessory building at the rear of the theater that I believe is called the green room. The accessory building is also proposed to receive improvements including a new door and side light with transom windows on the north side and a new door with, uh, within an existing opening on the west side. Both doors are proposed to be aluminum clad wood matching the restaurant door in the front. Um, staff is proposing um, or recommending rather that the commission approve the project as submitted and we do have the applicants here if there are questions um, other than for me. Thank um, you. I have a question for you, Maura. Mm -hmm. Can you refresh my memory? You just told me what these were but I don't know. Those um, are two samples that would be covering the, the front of this of these individual letters. So, so you that wouldn't letters see Facing me, or yes, because I'm only looking at one this side is, of it. This is facing the street. Oh, uh, as the existing letters are now. Uh -huh. the house. But that, it would be good if I showed you. Yeah, it would be good if we turn off the, the lights. Different. You know what I mean? Actually, I should clarify something. There are the, it's the it's the three things. Our our proposal. Can you speak to the guys? Sure. Please. So, so coming to us uh, just to answer a question, and then we'll, uh, once we finish with our questions to staff, sure. we'll get to a presentation by yourself. But this is the architect for. Right, I'm the architect for the project, and my name's Bob. Introduce Kupiak. yourself, please. I'm Bob Kupiak. I'm uh, the architect for the Ojai Playhouse, and for your consideration, there are three samples. The clear sample that is in the light fixture is our oh. is our preference. We've, you know, I can answer more questions later, but we're really looking at these these three materials as the potentials. But our our preference is to actually put clear polycarbonate in front of those and actually be able to see the interior of the letters and and the subtleties of this, you know, Krypton gas tubing that you know is is you know, pretty amazing to be able to actually do a restoration of that, you know, in today's day and age. Okay. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. I still want the lights to get turned off. I have a question. Like what, to have the lights turned off so we can see the difference. See yeah. Is that possible? Can you also turn it toward the cameras too? Yep. yep. Hey, Hayden, can you turn the lights off down there? Well, I'm just going to finish. Oh. Right here. Even
Oops, to friend. Yeah, thanks. Sorry. Let's see if you stand behind it. Any other uh, questions for staff? S Cindy? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, uh, Gina, Jenny, do you have any questions for staff? Jenny? I would just like no, to say I, that. I mean, sorry, oh. Gina first. It, it's just not picking up the clarity that I'm sure that you're seeing in person. So I'm going to we're going to have to deflect to, to, to you all there. Um, the one on the left looks a little bit more diffused um, from from what I can see and the one on the right, I can see the, the tubing a little bit better, but it's because it's on camera, I'm really not seeing the, the, the subtleties. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> assume your expertise there. Okay, Jenny. Um, I am going to uh, go with the, the um, suggestion of the architect and the designers. But I think we're not talking. Jenny, I think we're at the point where we're just getting information. We're not like making recommendations yeah. or decisions. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you want my like, like? I mean, I think it's J just if you have any other questions on yeah. the uh, oh, oh, letter I, oh, I have and the no, I have no, I have no further questions. Okay, great. Thank you, Jenny. Okay. Uh, anything else from staff? No, thank you. Unless you have questions. Oh, Lucas, do you want to make make one? One uh, point here. We did receive a public comment from, from a Mr. Qu uh, Craig Walker. But we're not getting to that until after the but I applicant wanted, questions, right, right? But I just wanted to make that as a part of our presentation to make that known just for the, for the public. Cheat sheet. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but th thank you. Okay. Uh, then at this time, uh, does the uh, applicant and their uh, architect, do you have... Uh, any kind of presentation for us? Do we have our, our drawings? This, is that these or I have this one up here. Yeah, we I have think. a we have the sample board uh, for the commissioners, and also of course, if you'd like to talk about it, I also have a set of plans in my packet, but I do not have plans. Um, well, I mean, screen. I think the sample board. I mean, I know we have some larger images. You can kind of see the front elevation. I mean. Our effort, you know, I think. Yeah, should we, we get that up there? I think I've been living with the theater now for almost four years. <laughs> you know, I think we've gone through a, a number of different iterations, and I think I've probably looked at every possible historical photograph of the facade, which is, you know, which has undergone many changes over, over the decades. You know, I think that our our goal is to kind of do things that simplify the front facade. Uh, reinforce a few of the things that were elements that were added in the 60s, but I think are important elements. I think the removal of the existing marquee and providing a smaller marquee that actually has some architectural detailing at the end that's more consistent with the shapes and the forms of the details in the building, and, you know, actually make the marquee look less like something that got kind of smashed into the face of the building. I hate to be, you know, you know, I, I think in the 1960s, a lot of things got done, and I think that was one of the things that got done. It didn't particularly get done well. I think our notion was that a s scaling the marquee down and making it feel like it was more appropriate to the mass of the facade was a gesture that we really wanted to make, and we think the three lines of text is kind of plenty to get away with what we want to do. And it also gives us the opportunity to disengage that marquee from the, the OG band that was cast and put into the building and complete it. So the building really does feel like it has an upper and a lower portion. You know, I think also in kind of the discussion of how to treat, repair the stucco on the building, I mean, 
Signal Street has already been restuccoed, and it's a textured stucco that I think has already gone through review, and you know, it's a very pretty and nice texture, and our intention is to carry that same finish around the upper portion of the theater, but that below the band line, and if you've visited just around the corner, it turns the corner and stops, that we would go to a smoother stucco. I mean, Ojai Avenue is not all that wide. We're really hoping that the theater is very well received by the community and successful. I think that people will queue on Ojai Avenue, and we, we would rather that they be facing a, a stucco wall that's, that's not so harsh and that's a little bit smoother, because I just imagine that, you know, how the public will engage with the face of that building. I mean, and there's also an effort here to restore the things that are there and replace some of the doors and windows that are in need of replacement. Uh, there's also a kind of a uh, relationship now between what we're doing with the theater. We're actually peeling away lots of things on the inside. So more of the historical elements of the building and its original construction are exposed. So the clearing up and having a more clear opening for the theater proper into the lobby so that the, as people are passing by on the street, they're actually seeing a piece of the history of the theater inside clearly. Uh, I think that, you know, I think we've gone through, I mean, the color's been up on the building, the paint color's been up on the building for a year. Uh, I, we think it's a pretty, it's a pretty happy color and, and a good neighbor to all the rest of the buildings that are around it. Uh, I know that around the corner on Signal Street, we are proposing a gate that shields the new electrical equipment. There's switch gear that's being put into the area that's behind the theater. There's also, that's the area where we all of our trash bins are, so we're kind of proposing a gate that's mostly solid, that has a little bit of light penetration coming through it because it's kind of a louvered type gate, but it's also now in this kind of family where stucco elements on the building all appear in that uh, Clark White and metal elements in the building are all being painted the stucco gray color. So, you know, the, the housing of the marquee, the shape of the, of the box that the letter, the Ojai letters are mounted on and the metal of the gate would all be painted that, that gray. And those are really the two contrasting colors that exist. And, you know, we think that making, well, you know, and also in the, the quatrefoil, I mean, there was a blocked up housing on the back. Uh, I, it's kind of hard to tell why it was really ever closed up other than maybe someone had a decorative light back there at some point in history, but just to keep the building more consistent with the historical vernacular of buildings on uh, Ojai Avenue, I think that removing all of that detritus from the back and allowing the quatrefoil to be open to the sky and have the grill in place, you know, is much more consistent with this particular style of architecture than what's there now. So in many ways, everything that we're doing is kind of, how do we bring the building back to a quieter, you know, more, central element to, you know, blend in better with the buildings that are on Ohio Avenue now. And as far as the, the gaseous letters are concerned, who, you know, are, are uh, David. Dave, David, our specialist in this, is here and can speak on this, but, you know, our feeling was those letters have been here since 1960, mid-60s. I mean, they're really part of the character of the theater. We love them. We think they're great. You know, I think we searched for a long time. David brought us to this idea of using this kind of Krypton gas. I know that the code actually allows for 10-foot candles of light. When we metered the direct surface of that Krypton tube, it was one-foot candle. So we really want this to be a kind of subtle effect. Uh, you know, I think that the actual exposing the actual tubing is a much more interesting architectural element than shielding it up. I know it was a kind of old red red plastic light behind it. But at the same time, in terms of being true to the kind of things that we're trying to do in terms of peeling layers of the building away to expose it, using a technology like LED or something else, you know, it's kind of, you know, uh, this feels more honest to the building and the, and the kind of things that we're doing in terms of a restoration type project. I know we'll use LED for the marquee. It's controllable. Uh, it's dimmable so that we can absolutely dial in the right uh, illumination for the surface of, the, of the, the marquee that's on, you know, facing Ojai Avenue. And it's, it's a large power user. I mean, this is not a large power user. And if we try to 
we want to be at least environmentally conscious to use the most efficient form of lighting to light up a marquee that's just going to be a kind of white glowing box anyway. So I think we've tried to be sensitive to both the, you know, the character, the facade of the building, and to meet codes that we all think we need to meet in terms of you know, energy consumption. So I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. Or in fact, David, I would love for you to speak, if you would like to speak about the, the sign. Mm -hmm. Um, hi, I'm David Johnson. I guess I'd be the neon ex expert. Um, so yeah, I made this sample so you guys could see a, a you know exact representation of what the Krypton gas looks like, um, and that is the uh, that's the same size as the letters and font of the letters that are up on the building. So I, I don't know what to elaborate on, but um, if you guys had any questions. Do you have any questions, Cindy? No, I don't have questions about the lighting, but I do have some comments about the overall direction. But I, you know, I don't want to interrupt your flow of presentation. And I don't know if David Berger is going to speak or where, no, think, how far are you? Hi, David. David, come to the mic if you would, please. You're not in trouble, don't worry. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we can hear you, but there are people at home that maybe can't, oh. so we're just trying to be mindful of them. Well, cameras, no cameras, please. <laughs> so, Ellen. Good. Going well. So. I'm not really a public speaker. Well, so we have I'll you up my here. my best to stand here in front of you. Yeah, no, but I mean, you were very um, generous with your time, and you walked Brian and I, mm -hmm. I'm sure you remember whenever it was a million years ago, through the building and right. showed us the interior and your proposed ideas, yeah. you know, super thoughtful. So thanks for that. And, you know, talking about the colors and why you chose the way they did, and we had a mm -hmm. huge conversation about lighting. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can just pretend like we're in that conversation again. Oh, okay, like we're on the street? Yeah, like we're on the street. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, my now that I see the rendering, um, the the individual elements are are work together to kind of create almost a slight veer into mid century modern world for me. Really? I don't see that at all. But. Because of because of the monochromatic um, well, it's just the way they all come together. There's a monochromatic building now. There's gray trim, which isn't a Mission Revival choice. Mission Revival Only is Only on the below, though. Only yeah, around I'm, I'm talking about the whole facade as a mm -hmm. whole, you know, and I'm just having a conversation about it and telling okay. you my initial thoughts. So it's like not one individual element is jumping out, but when you put them all together, you've got now a monochromatic look a white sign, chalk, you know, whatever the color is, we'll mm -hmm. call it. I'll just call it white because I'm tired. But generally speaking, it's a monochromatic look. And then a gray trim, which is more of, to me, of a mid-century feeling because Mission Revival doesn't have a gray trim. And, mm -hmm. and the only reason this is even, why we're even here is because this is a landmark building. It's number 26 on the landmarks. So these kind of decisions don't affect contributing buildings and surrounding buildings and what color those people, you know, would choose to mm -hmm. make windows and awnings and th that kind of thing. And that gray color is approved in the arcade for signs and doors and that kind of thing. But as a landmark trim, it's a different ball game. Like, I don't, you know, so anyway, I'm just saying. That's cool. But when you have, like, the floating glass doors with brushed aluminum trim and then you've got gray windows and a monochromatic look and... But on the, the lower, lighting. on the lower facade. Well, the whole, the Ojai Playhouse is now the same color as the walls, and the colored trim is gone. The, I don't know what you the, call the The letters line. are, are the letters? Well, they're in the same family of mm -hmm. beiges and whites. Let's call but it the that. You're looking at a, a digital. Rendering, yeah. I know, picture, that's the thing. You know, that's like, why we're talking. We're talking about, like, this real building. Yeah. You know, that has volume and has texture and has you know, a presence and has, you know, shade and yeah. has an upper part and a lower part. I know. And it has this roundness, beautiful roundness to it and has beautiful curves to it. And not only that, but 
mission, it is a mission revival building. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So That's mission revival we're... was the future in a way. I mean, and it was... No, mission revival was mission revival. Well, it's true, revival but when you're looking at mission revival in 1914, yeah. you're like, whoa, this thing's pretty different, right? Uh, you don't no, think so? No, I mean, I, I see I don't, it. I, I don't think I see it so. that way, but yeah. regardless of that, I mean, Mission Revival was stucco. It was white. Yeah, it yeah. It was beige. With um, with brown trim, with brown doors, with you know accent mm -hmm. colors. That's what I'm referring okay. to. Are the accent colors? I'm I'm just saying when you create an, a monochromatic look and the accent mm -hmm. colors are out of the Mission Revival family, it does bring it into more of a mid-century feeling. Okay. And then when you add a floating glass door with brushed aluminum. Like Caro's mm -hmm. had those doors, which I'm all for Caro's. But yeah, people love Caro's. Right? Yeah, people <laughs> love Caro's. But it does bring in that 60s feeling. We're bringing you know? Caro's back. Yeah, so I, so I just want to address the, the way it all comes together to create a feeling there. Right. You know, because that's what the challenge is. And then I like the, I love the marquee design that you've, you know, Thank created you. a much better design with that. Um, I think the blowback from putting the lighting up without a reflective filter, and I'm talking about the Topa Topa Brewery signs that are inside the Topa Topa Brewery, and when those red lights went on and the walls rolled up, I don't know how many people started screaming and writing to the city council about that. So my concern is that if those lights go up without a shield, there's going to be a huge blowback because of the neon laws in this, Ojai. Right. And I know it's not technically neon, it's but Krypton even and also David a, said neon, even though it's Krypton, yeah. it's the same look. Right, Most right. people aren't going to, I mean, we, when we were talking about it, you were referring to it as neon. Yes. Well, we talked about not saying neon. Yeah, don't say meeting. neon. But it, <laughs> don't say neon at this meeting, yeah, even though we've already said it <laughs> trying so to many times. Trying so that's to why end. it's Krypton. And yeah. it's and it's it's much more... Yeah, it's hard but, to kind of compare the two. I want to anticipate that the uninformed passerby who lives in Ojai right. looks up and says, they put a neon sign up, and then there's blowback, and then there are but challenges to the, that. On that note, I would like to say that this is a theater. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's supposed to illuminate, and yeah. it's supposed to be mysterious, and it's supposed to have its own energy and its own vibe, and it's supposed to show that vibe. It's supposed to allure people. It's supposed to create mystery. Yeah, it yeah. is. And that's what it does. Well, and that's what theaters do. It, it does if, do if that, I but it's... If put an LED a, in there, then I might as well be... Um, no, I didn't say put yes. an LED. Whoa. I said the choice is between what you've presented to us. Right. I feel like the choice that's better for Ojai because of the neon ban mm -hmm. and because of the reaction to the Topa Brewery sign right. is to choose one of, one, the, of those? one of the softer looks because mm -hmm. that's going to mitigate all that drama, you know? I just think people are so in love with the theater, and it's like, you know, it used to be the ISIS theater, and, you know. Yeah, all of that exists, and I mean, that will be true. I mean, it's supposed to be, like, we want to also show that it is a historic building, and that, I mean, I guess we still are by showing yeah, you are. some of the, the look. We were really hoping for the clear. Yeah. So we can really show the artwork of the neon. Um, sorry, Krypton. <laughs> and, um, you know, really yeah. kind of like, people are going to recognize it as this historic place. I mean, yeah. You know, we didn't get to you with our, you know, I mean, I guess I'm, this is my second iteration of Ojai Theater. So uh, when I was working with the, the Film Society and we started kind of cataloging the what the looks of the building were, we mm -hmm. really were far down the pike in, res uh, in, res in, in recreating what was the 1920s era. Mm -hmm. for the, both the marquee and the facade of that building. And this building was an Art Deco building. There was a complete Art Deco facade applied to the building. Yeah, it's been gone. I don't think that we, you know, this, I, we're much happier with the road that we've gone down now. But, you know, it, I mean, I have to admit, this is my own personal predilection. In terms of the adaptive reuse of structures, mm -hmm. and, and that includes historic structures, that... There's a need for buildings to have a life beyond what was only their l small prescribed history. They will live into the future, and there needs to kind of be an embracing aspect of the 20th, 21st century meeting the past in a way that's comfortable. 
but that still recognizes that we're not living in the, in the 19th or 18th, you know, 20th century. We're living now. Mm -hmm. And the theater is a very much now thing. In fact, the kind of technology that's being embedded into this building is kind of yeah. off the chart. Yeah. And, you know, and I think for the building to actually recognize that slightly and speak to that, I, I think is an appropriate gesture. It you does. Know? I agree with you. I think the inside does perfectly define what you're saying. And I think because it is a keystone landmark building designated, mm -hmm. it has to have a little bit more of a balance, you know, than what I'm seeing. Like, I think all the elements together are just maybe one slight step out of the Mission Revival landmark. You know, for instance, the clear glass on the lights. Okay, so no details. clear glass on the light, but... No, no, we're going to vote. I'm just talking. They're all going to chime in and shut me no, down. Don't worry. <laughs> I mean, what Bob said, I mean, there's a 50-50. 50, 50, 50 yeah, old, yeah, 50 right. new. Yeah. And we talked about this yeah. on, you know, you heard it from me. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. I mean, yeah. there's a whole 50-50. Yeah. We use it a lot. 50 old, 50 new. You know, we're bringing this, we're restoring and revitalizing this mm -hmm. wonderful mm -hmm. gem of a theater. We're trying to bring it back the best we can to its earliest time. Best time, I would describe it. Maybe. I think you would, too. And I think we're lucky that you're the owner. Don't get me wrong, you know. You know, like by stripping down, that is very much in tune with the early 1914 photo. Mm -hmm. You know, um, not, we took down the lamps. I mean, we're, we want the band. We want a proper marquee. We... The lower part is not historic. As you know, there's a lot of changes. There was a box office. There was doors. There was brick. There was yeah, yeah. all kinds of things. Plaid. Remember the yeah, plaid? Yeah, the plaid. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think some of the facade, the, the, you know, the glass nice entry with a, a brushed aluminum is kind of contemporary mm -hmm. in a way, sure. Yeah. But it's also the lower half, you know? It's still a landmark building. It, okay, the top is a landmark, landmark building, and but the it's bottom's still not. also yeah. part of the 50 50. Yeah. It's part of now. No, that's not how the landmark thing works. The landmark thing is the building is landmark, and going forward, it has to follow the criteria of historic landmark. So I'm just saying. But so what, would you, why what would you suggest? Then? I'm. I'm just talking and <laughs> trying to get more information and expressing. I mean, you know, you know. We, we did research. We talked to Craig. We talked to Elise. Yeah. Um, you know, I've talked to Brian. I've tried to talk to people. I've, I've done tours. Mm -hmm. The mayor's been there. The city council people have mm -hmm. been there. Some of them, one of them. Um, you know, like, I'm, like, reaching out. Like, I'm explaining. We yeah. talked about it. You guys left saying, great. I mean, I know you can't tell me. Yeah, what well, we like, didn't what's up. see. We didn't see anything. I mean, great. Well, when we talked about it, sure. Okay, yeah. now here we are. Things are going to be decided. Yeah. So, okay, let it be. Let's. Well, I want to pass <laughs> I mean, along I'm to another. All my heart, my bank yeah. account, and you know, I'm trying to be thoughtful of history yeah. and the vibe and matching the other buildings and being simple and being unpretentious mm -hmm. and being a place of for everyone, you know. And I think that's what we're doing. I mean, so, the, the paint you know, itself has been... So, <laughs> so let me call a timeout. This is for questions. Okay. Right. Rather Sorry, than, I mean, Cindy called uh, me up. Uh, I understand. Don't I you understand. Want to, you want to be here. I know it's, it's not very much fun being at the podium. It's way more fun being over here. You know, because it's just more relaxing. Well, I've been on both sides. I just don't well, like I'm having being a great time. There. You know, one of the, ca one of the <laughs> captioned photographs I'd, lo I'd love to have in my hip pocket yeah. is, you know, go home, rent, uh, it's a wonderful life. And go down Main Street in Bedford Falls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there are movie theaters, and there are blinking lights. Mm -hmm. There yeah. are flashing things. They are all in historic buildings. I used to live next to the Castro Theater. I've been to the Mayan Theater. I've been mm -hmm. to Patrick Weitzel's Theater in Indiana. You know, I know theaters. And, yeah, but I'm, what yeah. I want to say is that within the within the vernacular of movie theaters, yeah. the idea of having a sign that has more character than yeah. less character, I think that. You know, there, I mean, none of these things are bad, but I think that there is something to me that by shielding the light and starting to blur it so that you can't see it somehow anesthetizes the effect. I think there's a kind of excitement about this, and I think the theater is supposed to be exciting. And that's why we really felt like restoring the old tubes and turning them in and finding a color and a gas that would actually work for us in terms of the brightness and illuminance so that it was this kind of mysterious mm -hmm 
thing. I mean, you know, that's kind of what we were kind of shooting for. Yeah. And we still think it's very appropriate to the vocabulary of the building. Yeah. Well, I think other commissioners need to yeah. chime yeah. in. I do want to well. add, though. I, yes, I, David. The, my, my one worry would be that if, if you can't see the tube in there and you don't have that kind of dynamic nature of actually seeing that line, you might be getting letters that say, why isn't the sign working? You know, it's just going to be so dim. Too soft. Right. That you're, people will be like, well, why isn't it even on? Well, so, one foot candle's pretty yeah, right. I know it's, I mean, it's, yeah. it's not much. Yeah. So here's a question. This is just a question. Don't panic. Would it be possible to put it up with, that's lucite plastic it's not like the most expensive thing is it possible to take it off if it's too yeah, soft I mean, that's, that's just kind of a question one the, it's one of the great things about the way the sign yeah, is constructed that's what i thought is that even if we decided to ditch the krypton and go with a brighter light those lamps are kind of plug and play you can take them yeah. i mean even a lot of the old ones that were there are still functioning so you could take those out put new ones in you can make new faces with different acrylic on them or 50-50 or however you know so it's flexible it. I, I just want to understand as much as I can because you know it's city council and everybody votes and <coughs> things get decided and sometimes it's down the road and everybody's like what just happened so you know it's just better to talk it through in a million different iterations and I actually I saw in here that you had dimmer switches but is that for the marquee Only or is that marquee, for the sign okay so i wasn't it. sure yeah i didn't yeah, think you we, could you know, it's one of those things that either we yeah. get it right or we don't yeah. get it right yeah and that's why the krypton seems to us to be yeah you know but the possibility of shielding it softly and then whoa that doesn't work removing that is also a possibility and hopefully not an expensive one it is a very expensive oh, okay one. every one of those asking. letters has to be laser cut so that oh okay I'm it's just those, asking, David. Yeah. <laughs> being David, also that David, it's Bob. being also that it's up on the building, it's very labor intensive. Yeah, yeah. It's not like okay. lurk, working in your shop. Okay. Or you can... Thanks. But Bob, do you want to talk about the lower part? Because I don't think Cindy's very right on on that whole piece. The lower not matching the gray. Well, let's hear from the other commissioners because they may, I'm sure they have different opinions. I think we need more than me. Um. Yes. I can, make, I can just McCann? make a comment, Cindy. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for comments from other commissioners? No, actually, we're looking for questions of the presenters. Oh, the questions. commissioners um, will comment after the uh, public comments yeah. take place. I don't have any. I don't have any more questions. But I, I think that this, you know, this this conversation that I hear going on may be um, uh, premature. I'm not sure. We're talking about very specific aesthetic details, and is this the time that we should be doing that? Uh, nope. We're just asking questions of the presenters at this at this moment. So, okay. If, if you don't have any, we will move on to uh, Commissioner McCann. I do not have any questions at this time. You don't. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, I have a couple questions. I first time I looked at this uh, Sunday night late just gotten home i opened it up i looked at the uh the design that we have there and to me it was stark starkly white um and then for for me i went back so i guess my question is um the white that's in in here is it the coloring going to be different than when it's applied and seen so this is actually paint applied to actual stucco, and this stuck this paints on the building now. It has been there for a year. Okay. Oh, well, I'm getting to that question. Okay, and just trying to make sure that that's not any brighter than no. than what we would see on the walls. The next next question I have is the paint that's on the east side of the building. Is that the same color as the color you're proposing? So the the same. paint that's being proposed is the same, and it turns the corner, and you see it on the corner. You can see that element of the building that turns the corner there's like a stucco change uh, yeah the east wall could you pop that up on the column yeah if you pop that up it's also on a column do you see how the band goes around the corner yeah. yes the, yes that whole lower section is painted in the in the color that the building used to be painted so bob is this the side is that where that's that's the side that's the sand and stucco finish and, and, that, that's, and that's existing right that's what that is that's what's already. on Signal Street, and that is the Clark White that's been painted on the yeah. east, east So that's 
side. And well, if that's both front well, color and wise, side. but texture wise. Right, texture wise, yeah. everything above the band line uh-huh. is the core stucco. Oh, oh, oh. Only right. that lower area below the band is the smooth stucco. Yeah, you know, I, people won't, probably won't even notice that other than that it's smoother than they can lean against it. You know that's what I mean? They'll notice that's it. when they'll yeah, notice it. Yeah. yeah. So, so again, getting back to my question. So you said on the wraparound part, it's the same color. It's going to be that same color. Is that wrap on, on signal? Yeah, yes, the, e- the, the east wall the of the building. Will be yeah. smooth, the top will be stuck up. Uh, okay. So, so again, you're talking about the wraparound part. Is the wraparound part and that full wall the same color? Yes. Okay. That was my question, the east wall. Okay. Uh, so the... Yeah, you- Because of the, of course, of course, of course. And the third question was, I'll remember it later. Oh, third question. So in talking to somebody, I'm not sure whether it was you, David, or whether it was uh, uh, one of the owners on a Roblar across the street, they said it was interesting in looking at the colors in that the El Roblar and the uh, post office are similarly colored, and the arcade and the playhouse are similar, but not quite as exact, perhaps, as the post office and the El Roblar. And so my question is, is this, is the color that you have picked out, is it aiming to match? What kitty corner on the arcade or on any of the other colors, or is it a standalone color? I'm sorry, Brian. The question is: Is it all going to be the same paint? White? No, no. I'm wondering if the if the paint that's going to be on the theater is similar to the paint that's kitty corner on the arcade. Yeah, I mean, we've read. We, I mean, Scott Titus is here. Yeah, why don't you? Yeah, David, you have to come up front. We have. Sorry. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> We have people on. We'll, yes, it's very. We'll start getting to, emails um, going. You need very to similar to the arcade. In fact, sorry, Scott. I'm going to drag Scott Titus up here. Who, um, I think I know this guy. Yes, yeah. many do. Um, who helped us? I was research. wondering why he was hanging around yeah, out yeah. front, looking well, shady. Scott really has been a great help to us. I mean, he helped you us. You said on the wraparound part, it's the same color. It's going to be that same. Who's talking? Okay. Wraparound. Yeah. Yes, the east. The east It's looping. Oh, it's looping. I'm like, that sounds like me. Okay. <laughs> Alan Scott's um, speaking. Scott's been a great help. Um, as, we research, as we research the colors. Okay. And so is someone listening at home at the same time that we're in here? Of course. No, I think it's looping. It's looping for some reason. We have no. I've never seen that before. It's a loop zoom. <laughs> it's a loop. We're trying to keep it from being a loopy zoom. zoom. Loop. So, um, let, sorry. All let, serious. Um, let's go here. back to Scott. Yeah, I'll let you, there you go. It's all okay. Good. So, speaking of the arcade and the the pergola across the way, I've got a little a little app color reader because we were really kind of zeroing in, standing back, looking at the drugstore. Well, you see right there in the picture behind you. It's just. You know, so I went and I read, but that's stucco. A lot of it's some painted, some isn't. So we kept, you know, I'd have a multitude of off whites. <laughs> so that, that, it'd be like, and so we. That's, go figure. It, yeah, go figure. <laughs> you know, to, and and you know, the post office, you know, is really gold and dark, you know, darker, okay. that sort of thing. But we were really trying to target uh, the arcade area. Okay. And so this Clark White is, I don't know if you remember Kevin Clark, who's an architect in town. He did, you know, that's his specialty is, you know, Spanish. Uh, he re- redid a George Washington Smith house. And uh, anyway, we came up with this color. It was, we just, I just called it Clark White. I did this in like oh, 2008. Okay. So when we were trying to find, I had it in my shop and we did, and we went over and we held it up and, and it stucco when it's unpainted, there's variations. And, and, and it has variations. So we kind of zeroed in on one, and that's how we, we came up with that color. Okay. So it's a warmer, you know, if you look at it against the white background, you can see it's not white. It definitely has that 
kind of a creamy deal. But if you look in contrast to the post office and, and across the street, yeah, it's... Yeah, no, you know, I think it's a great, super warm, wonderful color. And I was going to ask you, what color did they just paint Matilaha? It's not know. the same color, but it's, it's warmer. Yeah, it's better they than yellow. picked it. See, which I, you remember it used to be gold, kind of yeah. a goldy brown. And I think that's, in my opinion, is more the, that look of the arcade and that kind of look. But so, yeah, I don't, you know, that I feel like we, 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 we went around in circles. We did many samples, and then that was the one we kept coming back to. If I could just point out as well, I, I think it's to, to Vice Chair, um, uh, con yes, to your point earlier with the, the photos having a very stark white look to it. This it, this is the color, correct? This isn't like a a stucco that's yeah, we unpainted. Rolled, I, I think this has been rolled. Piece I rolled out. Yeah. So this is a much better interpretation of what's going to be on the building versus the the pictures that we're seeing here, correct? Pro yeah, it, it computer generated. Though. Okay. This, this color Reason actually matches what's very much what's there already, and it's very much maybe one half of a tenth shade up or down from the arcade. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. okay, but but again, getting back to my initial question, David, and looking at what's here, yes, and looking at what I don't see what's here anywhere over there, right? Because that's a digital copy, yeah. and that was my question and to begin that with. That is a real <laughs> physical sample. Okay. Okay. And, yeah, and that's why I asked. Yeah, it and it's much with. creamier and warmer. Okay. I mean, like it's been on the building. I mean, we. <laughs> Well, that's why late Sunday night when, <laughs> when I got home from babysitting Ryan's kids. Well, yeah, it would be like, it, it is a little bit. But I see the old in this photo. I see that 1914 photo in this photo here. Okay. You know? And that is really the feeling that we want. You know, that we feel like that's what the building wants and that's what the building is. And it's really simply bringing it back to a, you know, it's it's like you said, Cindy, maybe it's, Better times, definitely pre '60s. Right. Yes. Better times. It, it's like stark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, Brian, can I ask a question? Certainly. This is um, Commissioner I, Pebor. I, I do have a question about the decision of the gray, and and where that fits in. To, I mean, I love this discussion. I think it's really interesting. I love listening to about all the colors of white. You know, we have we actually have a Clark white. The arcade to me is not a true color right now. It's dirty. It's, you know, there's patches. I mean, I think it's hard right now to compare to that, but I really like the Clark White. Um, I do have a question about the decision to use gray as opposed to any other color for the trim. So who's that question for, Jenny? That question is for any of the people on the Playhouse team. Uh, architect? Yeah. Sound good? Scott, I mean, David, I think I can Bob, that. do you want to answer that yeah, question? I mean, answer I mean, we're looking for a kind of neutral color that, you know, isn't particularly a standout color in the building. We're trying to limit the, the palette of different types of materials that are available. I mean, most of these things are, you know, I mean, the predominant use of that gray paint on this facade is the marquee. It's the cladding of that metal on the marquee. There Can you are, point to which gray we're talking about? Is it, what's well, there? The, I, I'm thinking about less about the marquee and the, uh, the aluminum um, picture frames, but more about the two lines of the gray as the, as, that cut through the building. No, those I'm are white. I'm just curious of where. They're that, white. They're, they're not white. gray. Those are white. You're just seeing, sha they're in shadow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, under, is underneath the marquee is that is not gray. That is not Only, gray. It's white. Okay. Okay. Great. Good. I. That's good. I, I mean, I, also say if everybody wants everybody wants to know whether they love that color or not, they got to go out into the building at least four times during the day because there's the sunlight changes the color is completely. Well, different. I I've seen all those paint swatches. My shop is across is Caddy Corner, mm -hmm. so I've seen all those paint swatches. I have no issue with the Clark White. I like that. I like, you know, how you came to that. It, it just, to me, looks like there are two trim lines that are in gray that match the marquee. And, and my question has been answered because you're telling me that they are not. They are not. That's just the shadow. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for the applicants? 
Okay, anything else to share with us? Great, thank you. Okay. okay, we will close that part of our meeting and we will open it to public comments. Are we ready to go there, Lucas? Do you have any speaker cards? I was just about to ask Sherry. Yep, any speaker cards? Sherry, do we have any speaker cards? No, but there's Craig Walker in the waiting room with his hand raised. Okay, do we have anyone else other than uh, Craig, just so I know what we're looking for? No, we have, no, the next okay. person in the waiting room is Christine for the next item. Oh, okay, great. Uh, please, uh, well, I'm a number four. Four. what? I'm a number four. Oh. Oh, you're on the theater? No, I'm on the, oh, historic district? Yeah. Oh, that's, 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 four. that's number four. I, I'd be happy to say something about the Please theater. do, Barbara. <laughs> Would you mind? Um, I, being his next door neighbor and being part of that block. Okay. And when this, uh, when I saw the lettering back there and they showed me, my first response immediately was I liked the clear. I didn't like the fuzzy, faded one. And... Uh, I, I mean, the whole thing, they've worked so hard to do this that I think it'd be a shame to nitpick them on these kind of things. You know, I don't think they're that relevant because the theater does look like the theater looks, but it's upgraded beyond anything we ever dreamed would ever happen to the theater. And we're just fortunate David's doing it. Someone like him came along, and they've put so much insight to it. And as far as the grate on the doors, well, that's because they want doors that don't get scratched. I think they're baked. Isn't that the kind of metal that's baked? So they never get scratched. They never get old. Wood doors get old. They get warped. They get, you know, they look terrible. They need to be painted. This, those doors are always going to look good. So I think the whole facade looks very clean. I like it. Great. Thank you. Can I say one thing? We, there was also, you know, just Yes, what, David? Yes. Come to the podium. Yeah, the podium. <laughs> we love dragging me to the podium. <laughs> we do. Um, <laughs> You know, there was a Facebook post for public opinion. I mean, I posted it on, I tried to promote this, this meeting tonight. I let, you know, the people out there know what's happening. And I mean, no one's probably watching or. You'd be surprised. I not mean, true, no not true. No one really showed up either. But, yeah, let's you know, go. The, the hey, Barbara, thank you, Barbara. So yes. Um, but you know, the public opinion on, let's say, Facebook, where a lot of the older Ojai generations like to do their social media, um, the post that uh, Craig Walker made in, uh, uh, about w with the photo, there was like 50 comments. They're yes. all positive. I read them. You know, like, yeah. they're, they're, and, and simply people are reacting to it in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be a positive place. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're, we want to show how wonderful this building really is. And I think the design really, so much thought went into this, so much history, you know, research. I mean, there's only so many choices also. Yep. You know, I'm not trying to make it something it's not. I want to bring it to something that it is, you know? So, and yeah, it has a little bit, the blower has some contemporary vibe to it, but we're living in a contemporary world and Ojai only gets more contemporary. It's not crazy. about that. It's about that it is a landmark building, so it has right. to adhere to the but landmark it's still white. standards. It still matches the no, top. I know that, but I, that's why we're asking a lot of questions because we right. want to understand the process. We're not making decisions; we're learning, right? And understanding, like the gray color, is not the Mission Revival landmark color that a, that a historic landmark would use. It just but isn't. Don't I have some? Flexibility that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking. That's what we're learning about. And today. if it's anodized, the anodized is when the metal is is sealed with the color. So I'm guessing that your wood clad, aluminum clad wood windows are anodized gray, or they're painted. It's a painted material. It's painted. Okay. So that's what we're trying to understand because it's not just about you; it's about landmarks in general across the say, country. I just want to say for record, this project is not about me. Well, I mean, you're, I mean, your building so and this isn't, building. You're right. It isn't about me. I didn't mean about no, no, you personally. That. That's where I am in this vehicle. Then. David, I'm talking about this building in its position in Ojai as an official landmark 26 yes. yeah. and how that applies to historic standards right. that are in the building code 
and the colors that are required and the design elements that all affect all the decisions oh, all the way down that. the road. I mean, I can, that. can we wrap this up? I'd like to get to public public comments, please. <laughs> Okay, but well, I'd like to say one just more one thing. thing. I mean, but David, just because I've we got, understand it's not about you. Just, just because I've just gotten off a plane we do. from Philadelphia, I mean, Jeff from Philadelphia <laughs> where I went to visit the newly renovated Philadelphia Museum of Fine Arts that has just been renovated by Frank Gehry. It is a historic landmark building, both interior and exterior. And there are a number of contemporary interventions that have happened in that building that are consistent within the federal guidelines for historic buildings. Mm -hmm. Buildings live a long life. Yes. And I don't think that they need to be, I don't think there's slavish adherence to some kind of past isn't necessarily what the, what the Secretary of the Interior's regulations mandate. And, and that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a historic downtown core. And I've actually been yep. to that building. And I, I don't think, I think it's a landmark building, but not part of a historic Philadelphia core. I went on a tour with the National Trust and the Adaptive Reuse Group. So I'm familiar with that. Well, it is a national yeah. landmark, though. Yes, it's a national landmark. But it's not, it's a different animal because it's part of a core with a cohesive look and, and paint colors and standards. It's different applications. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a really interesting conversation for me with a lot of ins and outs, as you know. No, I know. I mean, yeah. we do work in historic yeah. buildings all the time, and it's always a discussion. It's always. I mean, we just need okay. a contrast on, you know, with the gray. Sorry, just not to trip on the gray. <laughs> but, like, you know, we, want, we need a contrast, you know. Mm -hmm. So but, a contrast, yeah. we don't want the same as the rest of the color, because then it's really monochromatic. Yeah. You know, so, but we don't want to go, like, uh, brown you know we're not trying to be like old mission revival in that sense i mean yeah we're not hanging up lampposts and stuff no yep i noticed they were gone okay thank you david okay okay um sherry uh we'll bring in craig walker for public comments uh through zoom please Uh, yeah, we're waiting for. There's Jenny. We're not seeing him in the photo either. That's Jenny waving at us. Very interesting discussion as we're waiting for whoever we're waiting for. We're waiting for uh, Craig Walker. He, Thankfully, he's... David is not doing old-fashioned lampposts. There we go. Great <laughs> yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me? Oh, here's Craig. Thank All right, you, Craig. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can, Craig. Please uh, uh, proceed. Good afternoon. Um, I received an email in my inbox today from the National Trust of Historic Preservation. Yay. They have proclaimed the month of April as People Saving Places Month to honor those who dedicate themselves to saving historic places. That would definitely include all of you on the commission. Thank you so much for your time and dedication. I also want to call out both Khaled Alawar and David Berger for going the extra mile to save Ojai's historic theater. The community is extremely grateful. I posted the artist's rendition on the rehabilitation of the rehabilitation project on an Ojai Facebook page. Over 200 current and former residents of Ojai endorsed the project and expressed their gratitude for the theater's preservation. I really appreciate David's passion and dedication for reopening the building as a movie theater and restoring it as the historic anchor for the economic, social, and cultural life of downtown Ojai. Downtown Ojai. Although the agenda packet is missing, a professional study reviewing the project's historic impacts 
David's rehabilitation proposal appears to meet the Secretary of the Interior standards, although I'm a little concerned about the restuccoing and some of the other issues raised here tonight. I really think there should be a professional evaluation. Other than that, I want to endorse David's proposal and express my appreciation to him for his thoughtful upgrades. He has used the original 1914 design for inspiration while retaining enough of the early upgrades to keep it familiar to those who came to know it later. We are all looking forward to the grand opening. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Craig. Um, anybody else? Sherry in the queue to speak? Nope. Okay. Then we'll close public comments and open it to uh, a discussion by the different commissioners. So who would like to go first? Gina, yes, please. So um, I know we can look at it and say it looks mid-century or whatever we want to um, define it as, but I see it as um, is making a point of making non-historic features non-historic. And I think they did a really good job of keeping it simple and um, complementing the landmark and the area. I think that um, that is one of the problems that landmarks go through is, you know, when things, you're not sure if they're historic or not. And this is very clearly um, the more modern features. People won't look at it and wonder if it's historic or not. And I think they did a really good job at not going over the top, they, they downplayed those non-historic features in a very um, simple, elegant way. Um, but they did a really good job. So I, I don't see it necessarily as an era. I just see it as a, a, a defining, these aren't uh, historic features and, and these are sort of um, design. Great. Thank you, Commissioner McCatton. Uh, Commissioner Prebor? There she is. Um, I, you know, I, I really, I really feel the same as everyone. I feel, I feel like, you know, thank you for um, thanking Haled, and you know, I think that, you know, thank you, David, for coming into our town and purchasing this property from Haled, and I, you know, I think it's all really um, positive, as David saying. I love the Clark White. I, I wouldn't do anything else than that. I, you know, the gray, I do, I have some questions about the gray, you know, I'm a Corten steel gal, so I would kind of be going in a more, you know, something that really didn't have that kind of aluminum, like a mid-century feel like gray does, which I think is with what Cindy is feeling. I think there's an enormous amount of color out there in the world. And I personally would have preferred to see painted yellow door, yellow metal doors or, you know, something else um, other than the gray. But I, you know, I respect the choices of the designers and um, I love the project. And, you know, that's my only comment. I'd like to, you know, maybe see a little if, if, if we're not going pure historic details that it is, uh, you know, an espresso brown like um, which whatever might, might not be historically, you know, proper, but something that is, then I'd like to see a little color. That's my opinion. I love the project. I can't wait. Can't wait for my spot in the theater. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Prebor. Did you want to go next? Or? Um, yeah, I mean, Jenny, I was interested in your comment because I understand where you're coming from and my issue with the gray it's not that it's gray it's that it's not the mission revival color family and it is a landmark and our job isn't to make aesthetic decisions believe it or not you know we're not here to tell you to paint something a different color or paint it blue because we like blue it's not what we like it's what the historic landmark code calls for like that's why in the arcade you get colors for a sign you get these colors for your sign and that's it. Those are the approved colors. It's not because the historic preservation likes blue. 
you know, it has nothing to do with that. So it really, you know, and I really wanted to get into details. I know it's annoying. It probably seems like I'm hammering you a little bit. I didn't mean to. But I really wanted to really understand the lighting, where it's coming from. You know, the Topa Topa Brewery neon red sign was a challenge. There were a lot of problems. So that's why I wanted to really talk about that and how that looks going forward. Um, maybe those lights will go up there and it'll be a lot brighter than anybody thought because Ojai can be dark at night. You know, it's not, it used to be dark at night. But, you know, so these are just, we can't really know until it's done. Like, you can't tell from the rendering. The rendering is completely different than those samples, which, you know, we know that too, that gray is much lighter than the gray that I was looking at when I was reading the packet. But it's not about what I like. It's about what Mission Revival... Adap not adaptive reuse, because this isn't an adaptive reuse. It's not being reused. It's a theater. It was built as a theater. It's the oldest theater in Ventura County, and it's not an adaptive reuse project. It's a restoration. So that's why I'm asking questions about the colors, and that's why I'm asking questions about the design decisions that are more sleek and more in that direction, because it's, it's a restoration. So I don't know, Jenny, if that I No, I... I, I I think that that's a very interesting comment because from um, from what I've heard of this conversation and Craig Walker's comments and, and the architect's comments, that it it does not sound to me like that's what it is. It sounds to me like they are, are doing an adaptive reuse of an old theater. And so I agree with you, Cindy, if we are going in a restoration direction. That's why I said, if we're not using that espresso brown that is part of that part of, you know, what we see all over Ojai, and I'm not sure what era it's from exactly, but, you know, it's, it's, if we're not doing that, then we're doing an adaptive reuse. So maybe what we need is some kind of clarification about what exactly are we doing? Are we restoring this property to, or are we, um, you know, renovating it to be, you know, a, a contemporary theater in an old yeah. historic building. So that's, so that's my comment. So I agree with you. If, if, if we're going in the direction of, you know, an uh, restoration project, the decisions, yes, are different. Well, adaptive reuse is adapting a property to reuse it for another purpose. That's what adaptive reuse is. You know, this is, well, it, it, this it is still a still theater. Be, it, it's being restored. But it could still be, a, a, you know, an old school could still be re adaptively reused as a modern time school, a contemporary school. I mean, is it a you landmark, know, that old school in your mind? <laughs> I mean, you know, that's it's tricky. I think it's I think this is a restoration of a, of a landmark theater in Ojai. Okay. OK, well, that's that's a decision that I think needs to be clarified. And if that is indeed what we're doing, then I believe it's a different discussion. with different guidelines. What do you think? Can I make a can I make just a quick point here? Yes, of course. <laughs> I saw the, no, the notes going there's back a lot and of, forward. There's so a lot of different is gonna um, be cool. comments that are coming in here. I think it's important to uh, to point out that we have an object of record and within that object of record we have several character defining features. And if I could just read those character defining features, I think that's an important piece because that helped staff when we were working on this and working with the architect and working with David Berger and kind of just looking at the project as a whole, wrapping our heads around these specific points. And I want to say there's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, is this Lucas? I'm sorry, I can't see from. Yeah, yes. sorry. I'm yes, okay. sorry. Yes, thank you. See your hand. Yep. <laughs> okay. Good. So the first one is Mission Revival Style Architecture, which I think is to the point of Vice Chair um, Convery. Mm -hmm. The second is symmetrical um, facade. The third is shaped roof parapets. The fourth being grilled crotrefoil window, which um, Mara had spoken about earlier, mm -hmm. and the minor um, revisions to that. The fifth is the cantilevered visor roof, which you can see in the elevations. The sixth is the terracotta tile, which is still there. And the, four, the seventh is the white stuccoed walls. 
Mm -hmm. Those are really kind of the character defining features mm -hmm. that we're looking at. Those were what this commission had looked at in 2000, in 2020, if I recall correctly, in, in the beginning of 2020. And then council um, agreed and to move forward as a part of, um, as a historic uh, landmark. So I think those are, if we're trying to frame something, I think that's really where we frame the conversation yeah. uh, this evening. That's good, Lucas. That makes sense. Okay. Um, so again, uh, Sunday night, got home, uh, sat down, looked through this, took out uh, my yellow highlighter and highlighted all kinds of different things. Uh, the lamps that I happened to casually mention and uh, different things, the uh, coloring around the edges, uh, all these different things that seem to be missing in the new uh, proposal. And then I went back and I looked through the package and I looked at uh, all of the different photos of the building over the years. And I noticed that there were no lamps hanging out from the side other than on the latest rendition. I noticed that there were no highlights going around the edges with the tile color. I don't know if that was tile or just a coloring that was in there that goes all the way around the edges and goes across the ledge on the front. The uh, uh, that coloring around the quatrefoil, I had to look that up again to figure out what that was. Uh, and I noticed that none of those were on the previous iterations, uh, the pictures that we had seen over the years. And so uh, I, I would have erased the yellow highlighter if I could, but I just checked it off as something not to be concerned about in the new design. Um, I do appreciate, uh, we have, I met David when he first came here. It was actually before he purchased the theater. Uh, they asked me if I would just come in and answer some basic questions. I told him I had to be careful in what I said because this may come before me in the future at some time, even though it was already landmarked. And But I have enjoyed my association with you, David. I appreciated the uh, tour that was just happened to happen. I was over there actually looking for something that was posted on Facebook that people were getting all excited about that looked like there was some other edifice being built out of wood in front of the theater uh, from the vantage point. And so that's why I came over, you know, I hopped in my car, drove from Oakview to take a look at it. Anytime there's an issue, I drive um, and was happy to see, see that that wasn't, that's when I ran into David and he offered the tour. Um, uh, Cindy Convery happened to be, <laughs> seriously happened to be driving down Main Street and was in front of Libby Park uh, when I talked to her about something else and so she came by and stopped and that's why two out of five of the commissioners and only two out of five of the commissioners got a tour that day. One of the other commissioners happened to walk by on the sidewalk and smartly ignored us as they went by. Smartly. As they should, yes. Um, and so, um, again, I have felt your desire to keep things historic. Uh, I, I have wanted to defend some of the remarks that have shown on, up on Facebook, but sadly, we can't do that. Other than I did want to respond to, is the theater gone in one of the Facebook posts by just putting up one of the pages that were in my package, and once we get the package, it's public to show that there was a portion of the thing that was the theater. So I, again, I looked at those different, all those different issues that I'd highlighted with the yellow one. I went back and looked at what was historic within those pictures and saw that none of those were in previous iterations to what we're, we've just seen in the current, current version. Uh, I do appreciate that you're looking on that ledge of uh, removing the marquee up there that as, uh, your architect said, looks like it was slammed into that, uh, and how we will have the, the whole ledge going all the way across. Um, I do appreciate, I, I drove by it when I was coming from looking at the, one of our landmarks and looking at their uh, plaque, and uh, we had a really, I had a really long time at the stoplight facing north and got to, uh, to see it again and, and look at it. So, um, I was concerned about the doors. Again, looking at the different, that was one of the things I highlighted, but again, looking at the doors and looking at 
uh, trying to figure out where exactly the doors had not been in all of the different iterations from the beginning. They have been, with each inter iteration, it seems like they moved from east to west. Um, so, so the placement of the doors didn't bother me like it had when I initially saw it. Um, I am, I'm pleased that we've determined that the uh, white is not always a white, uh, depending on what it's being put, put on, and I appreciate the differences in the uh, stucco idea. I do like that you have a stucco more in line with maybe the historic, but a smoother on the edge, because I've leaned against a roughly stuccoed wall and had to repair some pants later because of that. Very rough. Um, so I appreciate that. I, 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 I hear what you're saying. Um, and a question for Lucas. Uh, you just read what was called out as character defining. The gate on the, uh, would be the southeast corner is not a character defining element. Correct. Okay, so I just wanted to, if we're not talking about the gate, that's why. It's not character defining. I do appreciate that you gave us that information. Just like, again, I, we appreciated the tour to see the different changes that you did in the back and anticipated in the back. Uh, I appreciated the uh, changes within in the scope in trying to continue to have some sort of uh, place for an audience to sit for a performance and keeping in line with having a theater, but also in understanding that there are other things that will bring people to the theater. And so, uh, again, I was interested to see that layout in our package and see what you're talking about. And for those that are watching, yes, you can see these documents. And yes, there is a theater arrangement inside uh, the ISIS theater or the OI theater. Um, so I guess my, uh, I, again, I go back to the, the doors are, do look like they're something perhaps out of the period that we've seen in the past. But we've also seen changes in the doors from when it was initially put in to where it is right now. Uh, with each iteration and each change of the doors, it seemed like there was some kind of change to that. And, you know, in some ways, I will. Mi I looked at the doors closely today. Uh, I will miss, you know, going through those doors and, you know, sideways because someone else was coming out at the same time, pre-COVID airs, when we could get that close. Um, but I do understand that there are uh, some changes. Um, it... Our job is not to negotiate to 50-50 uh, stance. Our job is to negotiate to uh, maintain the best possible for the, and recognize the character defining elements. And I believe you have uh, done that to a large degree. And again, as has been expressed, I very much appreciate uh, all of the work that has gone in all of the difficulties that you have overcome to get to this point. Um, very much so. So, um, so I guess um, I can't, I'm not gonna start keeping on straight gates, doors, uh, ask neon. Uh, going to the coloration and the neon element. Uh, when the uh, brewery went in where the uh, uh, laundry facility used to be, for some reason, everybody thinks, hey, let's send these emails to Brian and complain about why something wasn't done on that. And so the, the neon lights down in the corner were like a flashing red light in, in front of a bull when they first came in. The, the community seemed to be, from what I read, very much upset that those were allowed to be. And so my concern with yours, and, and these are much softer, of course, um, but my concern is that if you present something that comes across as being neon or, or krypton, 
uh, to the community, for the community, they may have that PTSD essence in there. Um, you know, now we've got a block away, we've got another neon sign, what are they gonna put up next? Um, just a concern, ju just trying to give you a sensibility of what the community was feeling when that went went to. Again, you're only doing it one way, but everybody says if they've done this, they're gonna, you know, we'll get, because they proposed blinking, blinking neon lights there on the theater in the past as well as in the park and down on the corner. So I, I'm just trying to share with you some sensi sensitivity to the community that uh, has been expressed by Vice Chair uh, Convery. Um, I am, as, as I looked at the different remarks, I am happy that we have gotten to this point that we were having this hearing. I appreciate uh, your, your being here and, and those with you. Uh, to give us the answers to the questions we may have to hear our concerns and understand that the, the concerns are because we're, you know, the Historic Preservation Commission, not the H Historic Negotiation Commission. Um, so there's some rigidity, but also some understanding that goes with each historic project, project especially ones that are downtown. Um, so I don't have any more comments. I think I got all my notes here. Um, I have a question. Yes. yes. Comment. <clears throat> so, um, Craig okay. Walker also wrote a letter, and I was wondering if um, if Lucas can weigh in on that and the necessity for. I don't want to um, put the property owner through any more. Um, paperwork anymore things. Um, we had a 19, I mean, a 2019 uh, HRR done, but I'm confused about the update of what it would need to be and if it's a necessity and what are um, your take on our code on that. I think she's asking about Craig had, and Craig mentioned it in his dialogue, the uh, request that there be another historic resource report uh, prepared uh, on this. Uh, I'll let you answer that question. Absolutely, and I'd, I'd be happy to answer that question for the, for the commissioner who asked it. So he, in his, and I think actually in his, pre in his presentation, his three minutes, he talked about that as well. Mm -hmm. um, I've taken a closer look at it again, even after the packet went out, just to see if I had missed something. The, the architectural historian's report was done very thoroughly, and it provided us with really the seven points or framework, if you will, as a as character defining features within that framework what they're proposing is not looking to diminish remove alter modify or destroy any of those pieces that we're talking about which is the reason why i, I made determination not to require an additional um, report at this time uh, had there been potential alterations to those character defining features then i would have considered an additional report that would have been brought before this commission so Great. Thank you very much. And Thank just, you, Luke. Just, so, just so the record's clear also, the report was done in 2019. If it was done 20 years ago and we were looking at it again, it, or even last year, it's all about the character-defining features that were identified within that report. So, And that's a very, very important point in our deliberations. Yeah. Thank yes, you Thank much. you for that clarity, Lucas. My, I just have one concern, which is that the lights, without any um, filter on the front, go up, and then they're brighter than everyone thought they might be, and they appear to be neon, and that is an issue. So any thoughts on that? Well, that was my concern, too. So how do you, how do you mitigate that? If it, if it is, if it does go up and becomes an issue like that, a we'll, neon we'll issue. We'll ask community development director. <laughs> Might I offer a suggestion or even a, uh, an additional condition if the applicant is, ag is agreeable to it, and that is to, to have an additional review by this commission regarding the lighting level, mm -hmm. whereby you would then be have an opportunity within 60 days after the light goes up for us to come back, take a look at that light, and see if it is too bright or if there's an opportunity to look at 
a dimmer um, portion. But I will have to admit, in talking with um, David. David, I'm sorry, David and <laughs> that and David his team, or that David. I know the lighting, David. Bob. Bob. Oh, Bob. Bob Kubiak. Oh, thank yeah. you. I'm sorry. I was drawing a blank. <laughs> yes, uh, Bob. 10 foot candles is, is the maximum that we allow within our code. They're talking about one foot candle, which, yeah. is, which is extremely dim from that standpoint. Um, so the likelihood of it, of it being an issue is probably a no. However, there is still the possibility, especially with the kind of the, the sticker shock of what we experienced with Topa Topa. Now, I wasn't here, obviously, but I've certainly heard many stories about it. Anytime that, that project comes up, Everybody has certainly has an opinion and a thought process that goes along with it. Yeah. The neon as a red is certainly very stark and very um, in your face, whereas this kind of greenish yellow has more of a subtle feel to it, I, I yeah. would say, in terms of looking at it. I mean, I have exterior LED lights that are 10 watts, which is pretty low, and they're bright as hell. So, And I know this is an LED, but maybe David, lighting David, not theater David. Could you talk a little 30 yeah, David, seconds? David about Johnson. That? A 10 watt LED fixture, if I hit it with an illuminance meter, you can speak to this. Please. Yeah, can you come up here real uh, if quick? I hit, if, I, if I took a 10 watt LED lamp and pointed an illuminance meter at it, I'd be so far over 10 foot candles, yeah. I, I wouldn't know what to do with it. You know, I mean, one foot candle, I'm sitting in the back. And I know I can't even see the first well, filter we have light. Overhead lighting. Though. Well, there'll be you know there's there's a lot of hours of the day where you know it's not jet black dark. I'm I mean, worried we've, about the night. <laughs> we've sat in the theater with this light fixture up in in total blackness to see what it does to understand, you know, how ethereal that light really is. Yeah. One foot candles yeah. gets kind of risky. I mean, yeah, it's actually I'm, I'm, very yeah. The I'm left sure you hand, can appreciate that we're voting on an abstract thing that we haven't experienced like you experienced inside the theater. So that's why I want to ask as many questions as I can think of. Well, remember, the, the alternative to this light fixture is to do it in, in, uh, a, in, a, dimmable, uh, LED, in a dimmable LED no, we're and crank yeah, it up that, to, crank it up to 9.5 foot no. candles. <laughs> can, I, can, I ask no. a, can I ask the... Yes, uh, please. Can I ask sure. a question of... Bob. I'm trying to... Yeah, Bob, sorry. I'm trying... I know the commission is somewhat struggling with this as well. Can can you kind of break down the neon aspect? It feels like it's more of a glow with the with this kind of yellowish green as opposed to kind of a like with the with the LEDs it's more of a in your like an in your face where this kind of has more of a like a hazy glow to it. And to the to the second point is is are there different variations of how strong the neon comes forward. I think that's another. David another would question. have to speak to that. David, so I, I, those. Anyway, if you could answer I, those, I think those are the two questions that I'm kind of seeing from from the commission that I think need to be drawn out. The difference here is that your th this gas is krypton, so it's just the gas that's inside the tube. When you have. Um, like the tubes that came out of the theater initially and what used to be in a lot of signs where it's backlit, acry backlit acrylic is uh, like 6,500 white that has argon and mercury in it. So it, it does resemble like a fluorescent tube um, and it's a maximum amount of light that's kind of pumping out behind that backlit acrylic. So what we're going for here is this kind of more subtle uh, color, but also the luminance is so much lower, and you can see the gas that's actually in the tube, which is this kind of like classic, mm -hmm. um, you know, like harkens back to uh, old time neon where it's just the noble gas. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't know if that answered your, qu your question. Yeah, it does. I think that answers the first point, but the second point I, I, and I think it's, it's an important piece because of the potential condition that could be discussed with the commission is um, the level of, of neon, I mean, the brightness. Right. Is there different levels? I know it's a, it's a noble gas, but is there ways in which that can be softened through the technology that we have? There, there might be ways of dimming it. It's not, this is already like so dim that the mm -hmm. issue would be um, you're creating like electronic issues with the transformers at that point. Um, this is 
this is like dim that you don't encounter on outdoor signage uh, out anywhere. So it's it's such kind. It, the sign itself will be like such a gem for people that are even neon or illuminated tube enthusiasts. They'll be like, "Whoa, it's so cool that it's Krypton," because I don't feel that like during the day you're going to see light coming out of it. You'll see that it's kind of a dynamic sign with different elements, and you'll be able to see um, some depth and the tubes in there. But then as the sun starts to go down, you'll see a little bit of color come out of it. Will it be illuminated 24 hours a day? It can be, or it can be on a timer. Oh, because, yeah, when you're talking about the day it being lit in the day, I was curious yeah. as to why it would have I mean, been lit be up in the a, day. On a, a sundown, daylight timer, yeah. It's not going to be illuminated like at 8 o'clock in the morning at noon and, and I think, o'clock. Or, you know, you wouldn't see it. Nobody yeah, yeah, I'm just uh, wondering. That's why I asked about the 24-7 To so Bob's yeah. point, I, I think that... Um, when we lowered the lights in here, it was very similar to how we were in the theater, but the difference was in the theater, we had the opportunity to stand back like yeah, we're 100, close. 120 feet or something. So it was like, we got the idea of it being across the street and you're not getting even like the light spilling out on the table, but you see a defined letter. It yeah. holds, it holds yeah. the light in the yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm doing my best to appreciate the lighting without that experience. That's why, you know, we were close. It was, it's weird lighting in here. Turning off the lights wasn't 100%. <laughs> well, we so, yeah. Here. We can plug in if you want to see the difference. Yeah, that, I brought the, that's just neon, yeah. similar to what's yeah. in the brewery. You want us to plug it no, in? No, I'm, I'm more interested in what this is going to look like as much as I can understand it. You know, I, I, I get this, the difference. This, the neon that I brought is neon yeah. gas. Yeah. So it's the same that's in the brewery. I mean, if you wanted to see a side Yeah, no, side. I get I know the yeah, difference. Yeah. But yeah, I just wanted to understand as much as possible what sure. you guys, because you guys have been living with this and experiencing it a lot more than we have. So you got to let what us David deal with it. What said about the artistry of it, even in the, in the, in the light world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, David. Just the, the artistry behind it. You know, is yeah. you know, this is one area that we're looking at, like like all areas, deeply, yeah, thought, with thoughtfulness and artistry, and um, and we just feel like this gives it the ambiance and attraction that we're looking for without the dimming and the going into neon and without using LED. Mm -hmm. And then the building, I mean, for the thirty, I mean, you know, the Alawars that the marquee Glasgow had the marquee, it was lit. It was backlit though, wasn't it behind the metal? It was backlit. neon. It was yeah, backlit but it was ba it was a, a glow backlit from behind. Well, so. no, the the acrylic was red, and then it was backlit. The, just yeah. the acrylic was backlit. Yeah, it wasn't the glow the line of the gas in the tube? Right, sure, you couldn't in see your it, face. but it was yeah. neon. It was a lot brighter. Yeah. yeah. So this is just more thoughtful, in tune with the what the, we believe the nature of the building and. Mm -hmm. Presenting that it's theater without harshing anyone out. Yeah. You know, without distracting anyone, driving. Um. I wouldn't necessarily describe it as yellow green. Yeah, either. it's, yeah, it's, it's no. actually a, it's a, it's, it goes to a light, it goes to a blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you guys have been living with this for a very long time and experiencing it. So we just have whatever it is, an hour and a half to get into it and ask a lot of questions and try to sure. get a year's worth of info out of you. So that's what this is about. A year and seven months. A year and seven <laughs> months. Yeah. To, you know, so just trying to understand. Time no, I appreciate it. I mean, of course. I mean, yeah. Of course. It is important. And I, I don't mean to come off as defensive. I just, you know, my, all for us. In the it's theater. personal when yeah, you're yeah. doing what you're doing, yeah, yeah, you know. It's okay. Oh, come back. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's tough. <laughs> It is tough to go through this. Um, well, I would like to uh, think about Lucas's suggestion of reviewing it in 60 days, if you're open to that, I, and if you want to describe that a little bit further. Yeah, I mean, it would be, 
it would be 60 days after it gets energized. So yeah. you'd have an oppor- the, the full commission would have an opportunity to go out, experience it during the day, obviously, and at night. I think the night is really when everybody is going to be yeah. uh, taking a closer look at it, obviously. Yeah, and I'm not talking about the town's going to get to vote on it and we're all going to have to jump, you know, because they're no. screaming at us. I'm not talking about that. But, and, it, and I am very, very cognizant that that could cost you money, you know? And you're putting your kind of neck on the block with that situation. I just want to make one point, though. I mean, having come to a lot of hearings and stood at podiums, yeah. there's a physical sample here. This yeah, is the fixture. Yeah, but it's, we're, like David, well, I mean, I think, you know, I, said, I think we're we, this far away, and it's not pitch black, and well, it's not outside. Yeah, I mean, we can put it, we can, we can move it around so that you can see it and turn the lights out. No, I don't need to look at it again. Um, What's your thought, Brian? So my thought is that I am, so I'm con- convinced that this is not uh, the lighting that's down on the other side of, uh, yeah. of the downtown park. So in, in listening to everything that you've shared with me, uh, that concern, I don't have that concern anymore. I am intrigued, though, with the thought, and it's, uh, it's, it's intriguing. It's also something that would bring people to the theater in coming and looking at the lights in the in the clear, yes. um, so uh, you know I personally, uh, I, I mean I would if I was driving by and I saw that I would pull over and stop just because I I like to understand what things are, and something like that uh, coming into the town uh at the volt wattage or whatever it's, however it's measured the light coming out from that does not seem like it's going to be uh, intrusive to the downtown or affected in any any way so again I, I like that thought of having the clear on it being able to look in to see that you could see what looked like movement inside from the gas um i mean i think the one word that david used that i'd kind of like to emphasize is that we try to bring art back to the theater it's art and artistry and craftsmanship, and we'd it like is. people to see that. It is. Yeah. It is. And, and, and it's different. And so that's part of what a theater is, is within, and it's, I think, within the confines that we have, because I do appreciate, you know, and things that are being restored and, the, again, the different items I mentioned that are being brought back to how they were, uh, the... Uh, things that have been removed that weren't a part of past iterations. So, you know, you can see the work that's being done on that. But I am intrigued on the lighting, and the only way I'm going to be able to see that light is if it's clear. In fact, I didn't even know, know there was clear on that until it was pointed out to me. I think the angle that I had didn't have a reflection on it. Okay, so thank you. that's where, that's where my, my thought is. Can I ask something? Yes. Just like we tours of um, homes, is there a way for us to see that in front of the building at night and, you know, and go two at a time so we're not a quorum and, and look at it? Because I'm just concerned having them spend the, the money and the time and getting it up there and 60 days out. And then, you know, it's just, it seems like if we can take care of it before the expense and just make sure it's okay and get it into the, instead of in chambers or us through Zoom, we're not going to see what it looks like. But if they can plug it in in front of the theater, against put it up against the wall, we can stand across the street, we can get an idea of it, we might not have to wait that 60 days. Uh, well, a- again, you know, this gets down to what they're willing to do. Uh, so I don't know if you understand what we're talking about. What I'm thinking more is the installation, and I wouldn't do 60 days, I would do 90 days. That at least gives us... Although the public's not voting on it, that will give us a sense of what, uh, how it is being read by the by the residents, uh, and we represent them to a degree also, and so um, you know, it's <clears throat> I guess the suggestion is that uh, we would approve it with the letters, uh, with the clear up there, and then uh, 90 days after the opening of the theater, uh, we would reconvene. Uh, to then uh, talk amongst ourselves and uh, do uh, and say, you know, even if we need to hold that meeting or what we feel like at that time. Yeah, I think we're confident enough that you and the town will be happy enough with that light that we would agree to that. 
Okay, well, uh, I, Gina, are, is yes. that what you're asking, or were you asking that they could just put it up temporarily at night for us to look no, at? No, I is was. That what you're asking? They were saying that we we have a real life sample. Um, with that, they said you see it right there. Yeah. That's a, so yeah, then, so that means yeah, we so, that means we we wait another month. I was just wondering if between no, I I, I don't know. I would just I, if what I they're saying is that is a it people, on the building at night. What if we okay? Let me turn my mic. Um, that's in t uh, entirely up to um, staff as well as our uh, folks here on whether we could uh, schedule that. The idea was that if the owner is willing to put the sample on the wall, I think this is what Gina's asking for, on the theater at night, we could go look at it, and then instead of waiting for a whole month to come back here, we would have a special session just to say, review, you know, get it over with. And hopefully we could schedule it quickly. <laughs> I know, it's a lot. Sorry, Lucas. Um, can I off? offer a slight alternative to that mm -hmm. which sure. would be to if the commission is okay having it displayed this displayed correct yeah this displayed on the building um and not necessarily having a meeting a special off-site meeting yeah. but instead providing the opportunity and then reconvening with the commission as a regularly scheduled um hearing or we could do a special hearing. Well, it's just I don't want to, them to have to wait that long. I wanted to do it quickly. Yes. <laughs> we can't do it right now, that, and that that's because that's what I just wanted we, to yeah, check. Yeah, that's the problem. Just checking, that's, just the, that's the that's the that's the challenge. Sixty days or ninety days? It's a, that's an option. It would be thirty days. It would be thirty days. I mean, I think yeah. I feel strongly that this will be accepted by yeah. the public. I think it's a piece of art. David's an artist. This is his work. It, 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 it fits the building, it's being thoughtful, it's illumination, it's just chilling. It's just all about, it's like you said. One point, would you say it's one point? Yeah. One candlelight. Yeah, it's nothing. It's really what? nothing compared to, I think, <clears throat> what, I mean, definitely what is out there. Plus, I'd like to note that that street, regardless, is very dark. Very. Very dark at night. And Dangerously. It so. is. Yeah, a, 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 as it should be. I mean, that you know, this discussion is, you know, I, I believe that what the, the designers and David cho chose will be beautiful. I, I have no doubt about that. But, but we have to remember that, you know, what the parameters of this town and the dark, the dark night sky and, and, and I don't know all the details of it. But I know that, you know, I live in a place where my neighbors have no regard for that. And I also live, yeah, you know, in, in a house that, you know, half of my lights were rejected be and they were very very low light so you know i i think all of this is really relevant but i believe that the the designers have chosen something that will be beautiful but i also believe that lucas and 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 cindy about having a moment just taking a pause and having a moment and looking this at night is is important um i have maybe something that maybe we could work this out if david if you're willing to put up a sample and we can come back and reconvene at our next meeting and and just bifurcate this light from everything else and then we can make a motion to vote on approving all of the other design elements so that you're approved on that and we would go and look at the lights on the building at night and then in 30 days at our next meeting we would just vote on the lighting would you would that be workable for you? Yeah, and one one yeah. one small caveat. I, I and this is kind of more for the applicant, but also for for the commission. Would this be up for starting tomorrow or would this be up in a week? Would it be up for a week as in in terms of a span would it be up for a couple of days? <laughs> okay, so that's what I'm trying to I'm a little afraid of putting it up for a week, Lucas. I mean, then you get the the entire town. I yeah, and that's the that's you the know, partial that's, concern that's that I have dangerous. is Let's pick a day, a one evening for one hour when it's dark at 8 or 9 o'clock and we will all agree to look at it during that window and then it and then it's gone. So you don't want the whole town. I have a concern with it being for an hour cuz okay, that's two then, hours. Okay, so know. but the, the the challenge that I have there is by doing it within that that almost feels like a serial meeting. 
Um, and then we run into potentially a Brown Act violation. If I walk by it like five minutes, five minutes. <laughs> I mean, we could just all drive by yeah, it. We don't yeah, have to I, go to get yeah. it. You are correct that putting it up for more than a night is just asking for trouble. I agree. I but think I that's think the, that's one evening, challenge. we can certainly all look at it in one evening separately. Well, again, we arranged on the previous one, we arranged tours so we could arrange times to show up. I like that. I think that feels more in, in tune with. You understand the Brown what Act. we're trying to do? We Make can't sure all go through it together. Outside yeah. of that, yes. But I do want, I don't want to tie everything together with one issue. I want to vote on all the other issues because you've been very patient and willing to deal with you know all of our questions so i think we were, we're able to come to a conclusion there and okay then so the about the lighting you know if we do put it up the public <laughs> you know, the public are really going to have a heyday with it a little yeah bit. So yeah I that's what yes that. all about promoting and, and letting people know what's to come and you know maybe that is what if we put it on the back of the building <laughs> you know what when some nope. people, when people will be at the theater we'll hang the light fixture it will not be illuminated when you get there, we'll turn it on. And for it's going to look weird on the building, though, because there's going to be two O's on the facade. That's fine. You can put it on there. And the, the light takes time to it warm up, time. also. It does take time to warm up. OK, so again, if we get back to scheduling a meeting, and then I, I'm not, I don't want to wait for another month uh, on this. Um, so we can do it so, together. We can do it together. We can meet. Yeah, we can't do that. Okay, okay. So we can't oh, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So there's challenges so, with that. Yeah, there the is. So, so my question is then, does it come down to, so on all of this project, we're talking about which of those three options we like. Because we're going to pick one of those three options. The yes, yes, I know, David. I'm, I'm just trying to decide what the variables are and, and get it narrowed down to, the, we're only talking about the covers on this light, okay. on the project. Correct. I, okay. I just want to see it clear. You know, I want to see how bright it is. Yeah, yeah we want to do that for yeah. you, so let us know how we can do that. And if we do it for one hour, if we each have 15 minutes allocated, so you turn it on, you warm it up, it's on for an hour and a half, or however many of us there are, I think that's doable without having a riot. Yeah, get some Instagram photos, get a little You're not going to promote it. <laughs> I think, it, I think it's, it's very similar to having the tours, where you have Yes, more like than we two. did before. I think the challenge that we're likely going to have, and we'll have to do some um, some outreach to the community to make them aware that, that this is going on, because it will fill. I think so. I think at night, it only takes one person to see it, and, can it, and suddenly can it becomes Can it be on like, the back of the building, which is sort of the... Well, you want, this, you want the street time. side, oh. because <laughs> there's always some kind of light on the street side. Right. Um, I like the idea about it maybe potentially approving it, and then doing the 90, 60, or 30 day window where we come back and we address any issues from the public that that are really, you know, we have the discussion then. And I'll spend the money and I'll bet I'm going to let it roll. Right. You know? And, and, and um, All right. you know, I, believe so you're, I believe in it. And I yeah. believe the public David's a betting man. So I think the, the, the <laughs> question that I have with that is let's just say, for instance, the commission has issues with the either the coloring or the brightness or the combination of those two. There could be, the commission then could come back and say, this color or this particular design needs to I be altered. We have no control over the color. This gas is what it is. Yeah, but the public could say they don't like that particular uh, All I'm gas. saying is, <laughs> this gas, which produces the right illuminance level that we want, only comes in one color. God made Krypton. When you electrify it, that's what it is. It's what it is here. Yeah, you're not it's altering what it. It's in Ohio. It's what it is in Florida. That's Ohio. the color of that light. <laughs> I don't think we, yeah, yeah no, we don't have any uh, jurisdiction over color choices anyway. Like I explained, that's the, that's the mission revival thing. But I think our jurisdiction is over neon slash krypton lighting, exterior lighting. That, you know, we're held accountable. Sure, I understand. Yeah. So we would just be oh, talking about the lighting. Uh, yeah. You guys are code officials. So if I'm in a parking lot, yeah. surface illumination at the pavement level has to be 1.5 foot candles. Mm -hmm. so this is less than less than a parking lot. It's yep. you know, it's pretty low. It's like it's pretty how low. low can you go? Like <laughs> the lowest. 
Um, so, Lucas, a question. Uh, yeah, a question. With the dark skies ordinance, this is just so low we don't need, even need to worry about it, it. It would fit within those parameters, yes. Okay. The, the key here is always making sure that you're not pointing up. Out and down is what you're always looking for. Out and for. down. Yeah. Okay. Right. Or straight. Okay. Our dark, dark skies ordinance. I just, I, I just have a quick question, Lucas. Have you seen that? Have you seen this on the building at night? Have Lucas. you seen this on the on a building at night? This particular, no, I have not. Has Lucas? Is, yeah. No, I have not. No. Okay. Okay. Go back around. We could put it on the building for you, so, or we could. I, I, I'll say, if the opportunity is there, and I would appreciate it, that, and I'll stand behind it, and if I'm wrong. So be it. And I believe it's a beautiful light. David put a lot of thought and research in it. We spent a lot of time on it. It's a theater. It, sh it, it really should be illuminated. You, like you said, Brian, you were intrigued. That's what it's supposed to the reaction. That's the theater vibe. That's in line with the business. And as a business owner, I hate to say that word, <laughs> business owner, I am the business owner also. And um, I'm the building owner and the business owner. Yep. And as a business, running a movie theater, I would, it would be really helpful. David, can you, can you come up here and speak? I know you're, you're on a platform right now. Let's get you up to the podium. I would podium like to so say that as running a, a theater business, mm -hmm. having a illuminated light that is neon-esque really helps bring people in. It really promotes the theater. It promotes that there is an institution here. There is mm -hmm. an experience here for people. And that's its job, signs like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, we took the lowest, most softest approach. And I'm fine with, I would like to fabricate it and, and, and get David building it and move forward with the facade and get things going. And Lucas, at 30, 60, 90 days, if there's complaints, we can have a discussion or we can see how many complaints. Maybe we'll have some support too. Because at that point, I'm sure there'll be a lot of support. Over it's there. not about like and not like or the okay. community chiming in. It's about the code and the lighting and how that moves forward. It's okay. all about the precedent. You know, that's what it's about. It's not about whether we like okay. it or so don't just like it. Just to, just to clarify the precedent, um, this is considered a non-conforming sign, so they're they're using the same dimensions. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a noble gas. They're not going away from the the materials as as a whole. So as long as they're doing that, it's not necessarily precedent setting. Now, if somebody came in tomorrow for as a business and said, "Hey, I want to put neon in," my answer to them is, "Is it existing?" And they're going to say, "No, it's new." And I'll be like, "Our code says no." But what if they want to put krypton in? Krypton is a noble gas. It's still the same. So. It's still the same. We fall. We, it falls within the same line, okay. just like with neon. Okay. Thanks yep. for clarifying. Okay. So looks like there's uh, two options. Uh, the option, uh, one, the one option uh, suggested was to go ahead and allow the uh, project to go forward to, and then uh, 30, 60, 90 days uh, to. Uh, come back as a commission and uh, meet and review that. We could do that as a part of a normal uh, Historic Preservation Commission meeting in the future. Uh, the other option is to arrange a tour of the light uh, at nighttime. It's getting, staying uh, light darker. Uh, at nighttime and then come back on a date certain reconvenient, uh, uh, re coming back for uh, a special meeting to uh, make a final decision. Um, does that sound like the options? Yeah, I think so. I think it's important to note that the difference between what, what we're looking at here, and I think it sounds like the applicant is open to either one, maybe even favoring the, the 30, 60, 90. One has this, has this commission coming back within the next 30 days, and at some point we'll, we'll um, schedule a time in which certain commissioners would go out not not having a quorum and doing it at night. Absolutely. Right? The second would be after it's built and installed, then there would be that 90-day cushion 
where the commission would be asked to go out and take a look at it. And then we would schedule it for a, um, a further discussion. In a regular meeting. Yes, correct. Yeah. Both of those would be with, with, with yes, exactly. And the owner is open to both or willing for both and betting on the 90 days. He's a betting man for the 90 days. Yes. And, and that, get, that gets it going. Yeah, take that bet. Uh, okay. Yes, I just want to make sure that we're being thoughtful about cost and time. And so, you know, I'm, I'm good either way, whatever works. I just want to understand that there is time on one end and cost on a potential additional cost on the other. So just trying to be thoughtful of that. It's kind of not fair anyways now, because like if I set it up where like there's a tour and I'm already saying, no problem, I'll just, I'll just spend the money and do it. Like, you mm -hmm. could really, I guess, I, I don't know. I guess you could prevent that from happening if you're not happy in a month from now. No, we. you, you mean if we look at the sample? If we look at it an, on a sample for our, t and then we come back and just vote on the light? Is that what you just said? I don't know. I just don't want to, I mean, I know I'm saying I believe in it. It's not, Yeah. I mean, it's not like I'm just looking to just spend money, but I do believe in oh. it, and I believe yeah. it will pass the public test. Yeah. But also, I hope it will. We could arrange a time. Yeah. Carrie, we have no problem to put this on the building at any time. Yeah. And I'm sure the public would love to see it. In fact, I would love to see it on the building. I would too. I, David, I recommend personally, not mm -hmm. as a commissioner, that. I would love to see you put it up and have us look at it each as we're supposed to per the Brown Act, you know, for a short period of time and decide. I would like to, I don't want to put you at risk. Okay. I also think we should separate all the other issues and vote on them so that you're free and you don't have that on your plate anymore. Okay. I, I really, I'd be happy to I don't want to put you at financial risk. But I, I want to so. also be be careful because I think we're talking about three different. No, I clear. just want to see it clear. You just want that's, to see it as clear. Yeah, if that's, if, I'd rather that it worked clear. I prefer to see that work. Thank you. Yes, okay. So do we. All right. Yes. Thank we you. just brought the options into yeah. consideration. Yeah. It was a real serious oh. problem. Yeah. That and we had a solution. Okay. So my requirement on that in, in doing the earlier one is that we have a time certain that we just determine that we're going to come back and reconvene in the earliest opportunity uh, to do that after we take the tour. Uh, I just am opposed to putting it off for uh, another month. I think from a timing standpoint, I think a month is, is probably perfect. It's the sweet spot where it gives staff the opportunity to work with them to come up with a date that, that works with the commission as well. Okay, then. then there's, a lot of, there's a lot of coordination that's going to be going on behind the scenes okay. to ensure that we're... So, so David, if we brownie. do, if we separate it out to the sign, can you then put the uh, is uh, postponing putting the sign or the this up for a month going to impact the schedule you have? No, it won't. Okay, so so then that tells us what the time frame is on our reconvening. It does allows us. Thank you. It allows us to move forward in many ways, and yes, we will hold the light. But we will continue the, the discovery of the light with you. We'll put it on the building. Yeah. And then we can come back and we can talk about focus again on the light. Okay. Okay. Uh, again, you know, it, I like to get things resolved. And so if the, if the one month fits within your schedule, it certainly fits within our schedule because we're going to be meeting anyway on May 12th. Uh, if you saw the schedule, we have quite a few things to meet on May 12th. Um, yes. We can talk about the date off offline because I think there's there's some coordination to ensure that one the commissioner's um, schedule works, but also to coordinate the kind of that sweet spot. You could just let us know when you like us to put it up, and we can do it. Absolutely, David. I don't know about the other three, but any as soon as you can do it, I'm again I'm still intrigued and very curious. So okay, I'll just wait for Lucas to get. Yes, of course. Um, okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, David. When, when when the sign goes up, do you also want to see it with the lenses, the other lenses as as? No, no. I, mean, no, I think we were just focusing just on the clear. clear right? Yeah, okay. we just want to see it clear. Right, kind of the consensus from yeah. the commission. Okay. Right. 
going to that's a good question though just to clarify yeah. but yes, yes I think that's kind of the consensus okay uh, so uh, Commissioner Prebor are, are you good with uh, them putting it up on the building and then it being incorporated into our uh, agenda in, in May 12th in our yes. May 12th do you understand that's what we're leaning towards is that yes that yes, work I for did. you I, I I'm fine with that okay uh, Commissioner uh, McCatton are you in agreement with that? Yes, I am. Great. Vice yes, Chair? Yes, I'm in agreement. Okay, in fact, I am. Can I make a motion? Of course. I would like to make a motion to approve the major work permit aside from the light test, which we will set aside for our next meeting. And that is the motion I would like to make. Okay, do we have a second? Could we do I a second, date certain? Oh. I second that hang, motion. Hang on just second. Can I, yeah, so, a second. So that's a date certain? To the to the next hearing, which we May twelfth. Uh, so I'd like to make a motion that we approve the major work permit for the landmark theater, setting aside the light, which we will approve at our next meeting, May twelfth. Twelfth. Thank you. So this I is a, I second that motion, Jenny does. So this yes. is a motion to change the resolute to modify the resolution to remove the lighting. No, we would add that as an additional condition. So the the reso won't be approved till the next meeting. No, the reso will be approved. There would still be a condition that would need to be satisfied. Okay. If this motion passes, that's what. If we're this at right motion now. passes, okay. The so motion is to pass the resolution to approve the permit and move forward, separating the lighting until May twelfth. Correct. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I second that motion. Yes. Okay, Sherry, a roll call, please. Akins? Yes. Condry? Yes. McCatton? Yes. Prabor? Yes. Great. <clears throat> Thank you all very much. Thank you. We very much Thank appreciate you. it. Yeah. David, as you know, this is a very important part of town. I know it is to you because you've talked about how important you want this to be to the community. And I hope you understand that in going through all this, we are. Uh, listening to all pertinent parties and trying to make the best decision uh, for not only yourself but also for the community. So thank you again for being here. Thank you for your time and, and thank you all uh, for all your work in getting us to this point and, and, and the support we've gotten from your neighbor. So okay. thank you, Barbara. Great, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Wow, see this is this is why I never tell anyone how long a meeting's gonna go. Yes, Lucas. We we're taking a five minute time out here. Seven eighteen. We'll be back. Thank you, neighbor Carrie Miller. It's it's Jenny.
Okay, I'm ready to get going. Is she there? Okay. Uh, at this time, I believe we would like to bring in our guest uh, speaker. Uh, this is a, a part of discussion item, excuse me, discussion item number four, proposed local downtown historic district ad hoc committee progress report. Um, is it okay if we bring in our speaker before we do a staff report? Yeah, we can bring the we can bring in Christina Morris as as a part of this. I'd like to just give a little bio. I know it's in our okay. um, agenda report. I'd like to just speak to it specifically, and I think uh, Vice Chair Convery also was going to say a couple words as well <laughs> to kind of get this this flowing. That sounds excellent. That's okay. Please, so Chris, please continue. So Christina Morris is the senior field director. Which, by the way, good evening, Christina. Are you? Can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, perfect. Great. Thank you. She is the senior field director and campaign manager of the Where Women Made History for the National Trust for Historic Preservation. She is a skilled preservation pr 
professional and advocate for nearly 20 years of management, architectural, and advocacy experience. Ms. Morris is an experienced and effective manager of people and projects, and she excels at bringing together an array of institutions, agencies, organizations, and stakeholders to find a creative and community-oriented solution for historic places. Her work spans a wide range to be inclusive of the sites and issues that fully represent our history and tell the complex American story. She has a personal interest in training in history, design, materials, and architectural or architecture of the 20th century. I just wanted to give that bio just to kind of set the table here. I know uh, Vice Chair Nolan was going to say a few words. No, you're not Vice Chair Sorry, Chair Convery, sorry, uh, in regards to this item um, and for the discussion tonight. Um, yeah, thanks, Lucas. So Chris and I were introduced by the National Trust, um, one of the executives that I know there, and she very kindly made time to talk with me about the historic downtown core and the benefits, uh, the benefits around the country that she's experienced in her career with the National Trust and how to move forward into the community in the best way possible with the best communication, how to answer questions to business owners and provide really knowledgeable resources and answers you know that that she's had the years of her career to to really understand so um, she very generously is making time for us tonight to have questions and answers about our process with the downtown core and what that means thanks i'm with it chris hi i thank you all for inviting me to join you this evening i should add uh lucas to the the bio that you uh, kindly read, um, that I also was a preservation commissioner myself and chair of the Oak Park Historic <laughs> Preservation Commission back when I was in Chicago. So I have a tremendous amount of respect for the work that you all do at the local level. This is really where the, the rubber meets the road. So I'm glad to be joining you this evening and, and happy to talk more and answer whatever questions you might have. Um, Cindy suggested a, a, a Q&A or just kind of a, an informal conversation might be the most helpful. Um, so I am happy to proceed in whatever way would be most beneficial to all of you. Um, so Gina, you had spoken with Chris earlier and Jenny, you two are on the ad hoc committee. Do you wanna take the lead? I did not speak with Chris prior but to this. I, you didn't. I email both of you together. Wasn't there? I didn't. I didn't oh. Yeah, I, I, that didn't happen. But <laughs> um, I'm happy to to talk to her now. It'd be great. Okay. So, um, you know, we've been. I don't know how much history you have about us, but uh, we've been working on this downtown historic district uh, for a couple of years now. It started right before COVID. And we had an ad hoc that um, went through the entire downtown core and went through each property about what was um, the criteria that we would, what would what the shape and um, what the buildings would be and whether it be non-contributing, contributing and landmarked um, because, well, it started out just because it always needed to be something cost, uh, um, you know, with cost in mind. But then once COVID happened, it, that even got to be even more crucial. So we decided to try and start by landmarking, going with our landmarks and having them anchor the, the downtown district and then working from there. Um, it's We've gone through all the buildings and then right when we were ready to present to um, Joint Council a couple of months before we found out about the Caltrans document, which I'm sure Cindy told you about, that has us um, as a state resource, as a downtown historic district, their um, map is very similar to our map uh, being a local district, we have included a few more properties in a little bit bigger of a, of a time frame. But um, we are now, it's all polished, ready to go, and now we have to bring it to the public. And um, unfortunately, we, um, well, the way, it, you know, it, it works is we had to get council to tell us to go forward before we can go to the community. And um, so while that was in process and we were waiting, um, we had some strange newspaper interactions with that put us uh, playing catch up and playing on the defense instead of coming out with something that we feel is really extraordinary and really important for the city of Ojai. And um, so what I, I guess what I want to get out of this conversation tonight is, is uh, 
is is changing that and instead of being on the defensive, being back to all the benefits and why this is important and why this, you know, is is a, a very important part of of Ohio's past, present, and future. No, that makes perfect sense. And and I want to ask, is it possible for me to be on on video? I, I would love for to be able to see have people see me as well. Is that is that not an option? I think you're muted. Jenny. Yeah, Christina Morris, it's on your end, I believe. If you, is there no, any way that you can... my, I don't have yeah, an option. That, that would be great to be able to see you. There we go. I see I can join as a panelist now. Mm -hmm. There we go. There it is. Hello. Hello. And it's always Hello. better when we can actually see each other as opposed to talking to a, a black square. <laughs> um, so that no, that's an excellent question, Gina. And I think it's a question that, that pretty much every community that I've ever worked with or spoken to who's doing, whether it's an individual landmark, but particularly when they're doing a district, when they're doing something larger, that's kind of always the question is what's the best way to present this um, so that there's clarity and, and hopefully also so that there is support. And I can just say one of the things that I've encountered no matter where I have worked, um, which is, you know, in, in multiple states and, and, and with multiple communities or whether it's with, you know, commissions or individuals, there's always a lot of questions, I think, from particularly from the potentially affected property owners about what is this going to mean for me? Um, they're going to want to know. I, I absolutely agree with you that you should focus on the benefits, but I also think that you should be very clear with them and very upfront with them about what their responsibilities are, too, that they are now stakeholders in terms of the, the heritage uh, of, and identity of the community. And with that comes some, there are going to be some expectations and responsibilities. I don't think it's to your benefit to, to try to, to hide that from them in any way, shape or form. I was looking through to the best that I could, some of the ordinance information, the information up on your website. Um, and, and it seems like there's a tremendous amount of room to provide that additional information to people about both the benefits and and the expectations um, and so that there is a lot of, of clarity and I think also given that you're working with one of the core areas of your downtown that's fairly defined I'm not suggesting that it's it's small by any sense of the imagination but that it's it's clearly defined um, and I'm guessing it's a fairly tight-knit group of people who are well known to you given the the conversation that you had with the property owner of the Ojai Theater tonight that it might be in your best interest to not just think about like, let's just have a big public meeting and open that up to everybody, but to, to find ways to have within the, the requirements of the, the Brown Act and the Sunshine Laws, have individual conversations with property owners so that you have a chance to, to meet them where they are um, and understand what their concerns are and then, and then find ways to, to help give them a certain amount of of understanding and hopefully comfort with, with the process and what it's going to mean for them as an individual property owner. Because the last thing you want is for their, this to be driven, like you said, by speculation or by fear. Um, and so having the opportunity to speak to people directly, uh, I have always found is incredibly helpful if you're dealing with a, a relatively defined number of properties. It would be different if you were talking about like a, I don't know, 300 you know, unit uh, uh, district, but in this way, I think because it's such a, a, a tight knit community, you also know that word of mouth is going to, to be at work here or social media is going to be at work here. So the more that you can, can talk to people um, one on one or in small groups and, and, and hear from them and hear their concerns. And, and when I say hear them, I mean genuinely hear them and figure out ways to respond to them. Um, and it, it never hurts to have sort of overarching information out there. So having more information online, um, giving people opportunities to access that information at their own convenience is always wise, um, but then also thinking about ways to just have those conversations too, to, to dispel any misinformation and hopefully also to take uh, speculation and fear and shift it to kind of understanding and hopefully uh, support. Thank you. Yes, we um, 
that's kind of why our, our ad hoc split recently into um, Ginny and I, who are working on uh, the presentation part of things. And then um, uh, Brian and Cindy actually reaching out. They've been in this community a long time. Um, we all know a lot of people, but to be able to get out there and do that one-on-one -on -one and, and to have those conversations, I think are really, you're right, they're very important. We did uh, create a, a 30 question and answer um, mm. document that you probably did not get, which I really wish you had. No, <laughs> but, I haven't um, seen that. And it is trying to, you're right, not hide anything. We're trying to be extremely transparent. It is a small town. So, you know, so <laughs> we want to make sure that everyone knows exactly what was expected of them, both um, from, a, a, well, Landmark really do know uh, what's expected of them, but contributing properties and um, that are new to this and, and, and not contributing as well. And, um, but we've been uh, working on that. So that should, after your presentation tonight, we should be going over that and adopting it as something that will be an official thing that we will be putting out to everyone. And then uh, Jenny and I are gonna shift to taking a slideshow presentation that I did for a joint council meeting and turning that from a 24 minute informational thing down to maybe a 10 minute explaining um, everything. If, if, Cause you know, I'm, I come from a long line of uh, well, thought of process of everybody learns differently, you know, and so there's different types of, of um, ways that people learn and, and some of them are more visual. And uh, so hopefully the slideshow will help with that. And, um, but it's, uh, it's just um, how, how to do, how to get out there. And um, it, it's, I don't know, it's just something that, okay, now we're here. Now we need to do this. And, mm -hmm. And it is a small town. I mean, there is only, there's less than 60 people that are going to, you know, half of those, half plus one of those are going to make or break this. And, mm -hmm. and you know, it, it, and having everyone really understand it clearly yeah. and um, finding that balance between when you have this one document and, it, and that one document will go for uh, merchants, will vote the stakeholders that live in the area, as well as property owners. It, it's very difficult to find that balance in one document to to um, not talk down to somebody or not give them way more information than they want. Right. And so that's kind of where I feel like I'm mm -hmm. struggling here is, is uh, we decided to do like a QR code and do a postcard and then people will have as much information as they want or as little as they want. But it's just finding that balance when there's so many different types of people involved in this because it is a small town. No, I, I understand exactly what you're saying and, and the word of mouth will kind of spread quickly and, and without knowing your community and without knowing the players, I can only offer very general advice, but um, based upon just sort of some of my, ex my own experience and what I have seen work well for others, which is, you know, you understand who are most likely to be your allies in this work. Um, and I think it would probably be very beneficial um, you know, to to have some folks who either are existing landmarks um, and who can speak to the benefits so that you aren't necessarily always the ones carrying the message, essentially the people who are going to be reviewing the projects and enforcing the program, um, but that you've got other people who can speak on your behalf. Um, and, and think about who's, who's going to need to hear from you first and who you need to hear from first. So who are the people that are most likely to be receptive and supportive? And who are the people that you know are going to have questions or, or, or concerns that you really should sit down with first and, and listen to them? I, I hear what you're saying about, you know, how do we put information in front of them that, that's relevant to them when there's so many things to address? I think the best way to figure that out is to listen to them and hear what their concerns are and what information they're already working with. And so then that helps you understand, oh, these are the, these are the fears, these are the misperceptions, these are, this is the misinformation that we are gonna need to focus on for the folks that we know are, are likely to be most, most resistant. Um, and, and then, and, uh, oh, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. And then under the assumption that this all happens and we do have a district, um, what what is the best way to research what other towns have done for to code to put it into a municipal code that makes sense and that that you know reasonable and and hopefully streamlined so we're not adding too too much. 
Yeah, I was going to, because I'm, I'm not at all familiar with your process other than what I could see online. I, I was wondering like what your ordinance is like. I mean, I'm just, all I have to, to go by is what I, I saw in your, in your uh, city municipal code. And then uh, the Taramina district information that you had online was the expectation that you would develop something similar like that to guide or are you thinking something entirely new for this district? I think with, with Terramina is they came to us as a residential area that wanted had a, had a want and a need. Uh, this is very different. This is our, you know, our commerce, our downtown core district that, you know, is, is defined. It's, 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 um, everybody knows exactly where it is. It's where all of our celebrations happen. It's where everybody gathers. It's where our commerce is. It's where our merchants are. And, and so it's a very different, um, I, I think it's very different than, than what they did. Um, we listened to them. And I think that that's what we had to do for that. But I think for this, we need to do, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. It's like, what are other small towns who are doing this? Mm -hmm. what, what is successful? And how do we incorporate that? There are as and, and it's about education. I'm sorry yeah. to break in, but I just... You know, I think that we, Gina and I have spoke about this a lot, a lot about, it's about tone, it's mm -hmm. about education. Um, I, you know, was a bit late to the meeting because I was at the doctor with my son and, and I was reading over all of the questions. And I said to him, it, we have a lot of questions that, uh, that begin with a negative. And we don't want to begin with a negative. Mm -hmm. We want to begin with a positive. So it's instead of won't, you know, how are we going to approach? I mean, a lot of it is, you know, your advice on that about, um, you know, well, I mean, from the meeting tonight, not being on the defensive, we don't want to be on the defensive. Mm -hmm. And, and this is a positive thing. And, and um, I think it's about having that, you know, what's, what is it called, like the ripple effect throughout the community, that, wow, this is cool. And this is great. And this is really <laughs> wonderful for us. And, when new families choose to come to this town, this is relevant. So it's, you know, it, it's, it's historic, but it's relevant. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that we've struggled with, is there one document, is there a few documents, whatever, but you know, it's the education portion of it um, that I think is yeah. the most important thing for the most, educated business owner in our town to someone new who is just approaching this town and, and, and wanting to build a life here. No, I hear you. And, and um, I, I'm going to try to remember to answer both questions. So, so I think a lot of people approach it from that standpoint, Jenny, the idea of we just need to put the information out there and, and give people some more information, help educate them, help them get on board. And that's true. Like the, if you don't have the education, if you leave a vacuum, if you don't provide information, people are going to fill it with their own information. So having something that you can point to is absolutely critical. Um, I would, I, I guess the one thing that I would advise on that front is to really have that information be driven by, by what you're hearing from your own community in terms of what their actual questions are. I, you don't want to frame this as a negative. You want to frame this as a positive, as an opportunity. But I would put it to you and the ad hoc committee and the whole commission to kind of really think about what your what's the goal here? Why are you proposing this as a historic district? And and I don't mean from the standpoint of it does it meet the Secretary of the Interior standards? And what will this mean for Ojai? And why is this a priority for the Preservation Commission? Why do you think this is important? And what are you hoping it will do for the town? What are you hoping it will do for the businesses? What are you hoping it will do for tourism, for your identity, for your economy? And really frame it from that perspective uh, um, and so that people understand that there's more to this than just we're trying to freeze some old buildings in time, because that's, exactly. I think, what most people's perception is going to be. So ground it in the values um, of why this is important to, to Ojai and why this is going to be meaningful and beneficial for the long term. Um, and let your information flow from that, um, but also in response to the kind of questions that you're hearing from the people who are, are most likely to, to be resistant to this and not necessarily, like you said, don't 
frame it as a negative, but frame it as we're putting information out there to respond to the concerns that we've heard. And, and the that's, more that, oh, go ahead, Gina. That, that is um, where these 30 questions came from mm -hmm. was as soon as the paper came out with this very strange article, we started hearing from the community and those 30 questions are mostly from that. Okay. Originally, I worded them in more like, you know, what is, is this going to create more red tape? Is this going to make, call, and, and then, so Jenny, that's why we're talking about changing it. I don't want it to be a fluff piece. Like, why is this going to be so great for you? Because that people just also will just turn off to thinking, oh, this is just a PR piece. Mm -hmm. And I really want to have it not be a negative question, but be the question that is being asked instead of having it be more of a PR piece, because it, I feel like this has got to be so many things in this one document. And, and uh, that's what, you know. <laughs> well, and maybe, maybe it's a, an, an issue of not trying to put that much weight on a single document. I mean, if there's a way to have that information structured for what you know are going to be different audiences with different questions and different concerns, um, so that you're not trying to kind of, in a, in a way, kind of force feed people all the same information when maybe half of it, half of those questions aren't going to be of interest or, or be relevant to them. If there's a way to think about how, how to package and present and share the information differently so that people can focus on the things that are most relevant to them. And that might mean that it's, a, it's something that, that exists online so that it's also more malleable, it's more flexible, more, more editable or changeable um, that you can make additions to it. And the, the other reason why um, Cindy wanted me to, to talk to you this evening um, was because we have grant funds. We have small matching grant funds that we offer every year that could help support precisely this, whether that's bringing in someone to help you develop these materials or whether that's hiring a consultant to help facilitate these conversations, whether it's help having someone help you with kind of a marketing and communications plan, any and all of the, they're, they're planning grants in the broadest sense of the word and they are anywhere from sort of like five to 10, well, about three to five, three to $10,000, usually in the $5,000 range. And they're matching one-to-one -one match, but um, staff time, pro bono assistance, volunteer time all counts as match. It doesn't have to be a cash match. So if you guys are doing, you know, putting a lot of sweat equity into this, then that counts as your match. And our next application, it's a very simple application and the next application deadline is June 1st. So that's something that if that would appeal to you, I would absolutely encourage you to consider applying to us uh, for some grant funding to help you either develop the materials or to help you implement the process of, of the outreach and engagement around this. Um, can it be an after the fact sort of thing? Like, um, could it be grant? Well, I see the problem is, is uh, this is our 100th all year long. We've been celebrating our 100th anniversary of the city of Ojai. Mm -hmm. And that ends in August, beginning of August. Mm -hmm. So our timeline has been to try and, get this into a joint council meeting, get council approval, get out to the public, get that first um, conversation of, of uh, support vote, getting that um, second vote, getting, I mean, everything that we have to do, getting it to council again and having, depending on how it's voted, having them vote on it and having this all done before August. So, I mean, it could be the 101st year, but that 100th year just really sounds like, you know, it's such a, a nice thing to do and for you know, Libby and, and all that, that ever Libby did for our town. No, I, I understand the, <laughs> the impetus to try to have this fall within your, cent your centenary. Um, it, no, unfortunately, it can't be retroactive. It's only for projects okay. that are yet to happen. So if it's something that you're, you're absolutely committed to trying to make this all happen between now and August, um, then yeah, there would have to be a, it, it wouldn't work for that, um, I don't okay. think. But if, if there's um, some other aspects to this that it would extend beyond August, I would be incredibly impressed if you got all of this done and sort of with you know, uh, uh, everyone with smiles and rainbows uh, between now and August, um, you know, that amazing job on, on you. But if there are components of it that you think would extend beyond that, then please do consider coming to us for, for funding to help you with maybe it's phase two of this, or maybe it's um, developing I, I of just, the I guidelines, just, you know, those kinds of things. Um, I would just like to say to, to, to add, I'm, I'm 
I thought this was going to be a presentation, but I feel like it's more of a discussion. Um, you know, there's a group of people in town who grew up here who, or who are partnered with people who grew up here who have all come back and um, are buying businesses, are starting businesses, are, you know, very interested in this endeavor. endeavor. And um, one of those people is a marketing graphics designer person. And I did have a conversation with her um, about would she be interested in this project, you know, not knowing what the, exactly this project is going to be because we don't know yet. Um, and we, you know, that's just something that I want to put, put out there is that, you know, to have a local marketing um, specialist kind of be on board with us and help us shape it. And, you know, we talked about like, exactly what you just said about like taking questions from the street and, and what do we do with those questions from the street and how do we shape those answers? And, and, you know, do we have, you know, the teen kids from the community service program at OBS at the farmer's market, you know, with clipboards. And I mean, those kinds of things I think are the kind of, um, you know, I don't want to say like advice and counsel, but that that we would like from uh, you and someone like you. And um, I think it is this kind of, like I said before, this ripple effect, right? Like, oh, what are they talking about the farmer's market? Oh, well, the teens were asking about this. And, you know, and so I, I feel like we do have support within the community to reach out for a pro bono volunteer mm -hmm. kind of core, which sounds like a lot where you're coming from. It's like, you've got to start with on the street and what are people saying and what are people asking and responding to that. Um, I kind of like the other side too of like, just, you know, let's be our PR people and like, let's get some document out there that like says, hey, this is great. and and everything kind of falling together because, um, you know, I, I just I, I just think that all those levels are, in, are important. Um, I'm going to you both um, mentioned the whole presentation thing a couple of times. I think there was some miscommunication because when Cindy invited me, she said to this would just be a kind of an informal Q&A with the group who was working on this. So I'm not sure where the whole presentation came from, but that. <laughs> <laughs> that was not what we had discussed in advance. It was more just kind of a, an, an informal uh, discussion. So there is, is no presentation. <laughs> it is really helpful too. Thank you. No, and, and I, I hear what you're all saying. I, there are, to answer your question, Gina, about sort of are there examples? I think there are as many examples as there are communities. And so it's really kind of driven by, um, it's not so much like we follow this template and we will have success. It's understanding what the the tenor is and, and of your own community and just being very responsive to that. Now there are a million different tools that you can use to be responsive to that or as Jenny was saying to kind of take that temperature and there are consultants that that's what they do like they help facilitate we did this in Oak Park for when we were developing new guidelines. We worked with a consultant who had multiple different ways that we engaged people. So there were small group meetings, there were individual meetings, there was an online survey. Like we found, we did, you know, we in, sort of created ambassadors within the different, you know, within the different affected neighborhoods and gave them a toolkit for how to lead meetings with their own communities. I mean, it's kind of like community organizing 101, but there are a lot of, there are a lot of consultants out there who do that work. I think it really, but again, that there are the tools exist. It's really kind of understanding what's going to be the best fit for the group of people that you're working with. And of course, the, the media is going to be a, a part of that. As you said, some of this, this was kind of sparked by the fact that the media kind of got ahead of you here. So really thinking about, you know, I don't, I don't like to think of them as fluff pieces because they're not. I mean, you're not trying to kind of snow people into thinking that this is all like sunshine and, you know, wonderful. It's more about, you know, making sure that, that people understand. And that's where I was coming at with from the values. Not that that's, that, that, that I, I was actually quite intending that to be quite genuine. That what are the, what are the values motivating 
this decision? Like, why is it important to Ojai to have this district in place? What's this going to mean, not just this year, but five years from now or another hundred years from now? Why is it important that you kind of not just identify, but recognize and find ways to, to preserve this heritage? Um, for the next generation and the generation after that. And, and so, and to communicate those things um, so that I think people, because preservation can be misconstrued in many times, you know, in terms of what it is and what it's intended to do. So to communicate the values behind it or that are underlying it, I think will help kind of demystify that, oh, this isn't just about paint colors. This is actually about heritage and, and community identity and community values. Chris, can I um, also add into that? Um, you know, one of the comments that we've gotten is, oh, has been fine for 100 years, so why do we need to do this now? Why do you people want to get in and mess with us? Um, can you speak to that? What, have you had um, any experience with that, that conversation, in other words? Is, is the sort of the, the, the intention behind that, that we've sort of, we've managed things just fine ourselves. So we don't need, we don't need a new set of rules or regulations. I, I, I would say, yeah, that's probably what mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I honestly, I think that's a very valid question. Like I, I think a lot of people look at this as a, another layer of rules, you know, that I, I'm a good steward of my building and I don't see why I need to be bound by another set of rules. And that, that might be perfectly true for that person, but they aren't likely to be the owner of that building um, perhaps 20 or 30 or 50 years from now. And so that's why I was getting to that point of the underlying intention and values here so that it doesn't come across as something personal that you're trying to impose on people that you view as bad stewards who need to be guided in some way, but that this is really about understanding what are some of the most important and meaningful resources that really identify like Ojai and that contribute to its beauty and its value and its economy. And these are the things that we wanna make sure that people in a hundred years from now see, and you most likely are not gonna be around to be the person who's taking care of this property in 50 or a hundred years from now. So that's really what this is about, not pointing a finger at, at you here today, who are perhaps a fantastic steward of this place. And, and we've seen that. We've seen that in this town. We've gotten really lucky with new stewards for a lot of our, our, our core buildings, but um, it could have gone the other way as well. And, um, and, so, that's, and that's where you can also point to the benefits, um, you know, not to gloss over the fact that there's, you know, expectations, but you know, that's where you can talk to them about whatever levels of assistance, Mills Act, funding opportunities, tax credits, those kinds of things. You, you know, the answer to that is you're right. You are you and your neighbors are doing a fantastic job of taking care of these buildings. And when in five years from now or 10 years from now or 20 years from now, someone wants to do a, a major investment in this property, a major restoration or a major adaptive reuse, we want you or them to be able to take advantage of those incentives um, so that they have an extra amount of funding to be able to support the costs that we know are going to come along with uh, giving this building another 50 years of, of useful life. Yes, so um, back to that question that we were talk talking about as far as getting it into code and following other town, we, we talked about having joint um, meetings with planning I think that that's something that that people worry about is um, how long it takes to get something done in this town. This town, you know, I it took me forever to get this thing done, and and so I just I I want to put forth the best language that we can um, that's been successful in communities that are similar to ours. That instead of not rewriting the wheel, but like following. And I was just wondering if um, if you have any experience with like 
where to <laughs> yeah now i will be honest with you it's been a while since i've been in the uh, historic preservation commission trenches so i don't have a whole bunch of, of examples ready at my fingertips but i always direct people to uh, napc the national alliance of preservation commissions if you are a member or, or somebody within or if they tend to be the best source of kind of and and do a good job of compiling lots of different examples and, and I think that that's a really good way to kind of think about, you know, what are the, I mean, do you want, you know, when we were doing this in Oak Park, we had to do a, because our ordinance required it, a full blown set of guidelines um, to specific to each historic district. That's what our ordinance dictated, which was an enormous time consuming, lengthy public process, which as it should be. But, but I think you should, again, I kind of come back to what are you trying to achieve? Um, and so then think about what are the, I like to think of preservation as a tool, not an end, an end in and of itself. Um, you know, so what, how do you want to use this tool to help achieve the ends that you're trying to achieve for the district? and for your community. And then you create, you fill out the, the toolkit with the things that help you achieve those goals. So if it's really to help support business owners um, or property owners, then you structure the guidance in ways. And, and I think tonight's meeting was a good example. You know, what are ways that you can be most responsive to and most supportive to business owners, but in a way that still understanding um, the building and, and you know, kind of what is got that fine balance need to be so that you're not kind of making the your requirements for the property necessarily overshadow their goals as a business owner and a property owner and structure the tools in ways that support those goals. You know, some places the goal is to freeze things in amber. I don't agree with that, but if that's your goal, then you create guidelines and you create tools that get you to that end. And I don't get the impression that that's, that's your goal here. All right. Thank you. Jenny or Gina, did you have any specific questions about that Chris might answer about tax credits, Mills Act, and maybe in a little, I'm not sure if that's your expertise, Chris, as much, but there were I know more on about the I know more about the the tax credits than the Mills Act, um, and I'm guessing the tax credits would be more applicable in a business district anyway than the Mills Act. Which that helps because really... I know more about the Mills Act than the tax credits. <laughs> there you go. So maybe I don't know Jenny and Gina if you wanted to address I, I, that. I think what our, what our questions um, we got really confused when we first put together the slideshow. We um, were under the impression that as a contributing property, you would have these incentives. Um, but then we realized that um, we weren't quite sure as far as with the federal and with the state, like at what point do these incentives kick in and, and does it have to be rewritten into code that it, the contributings yeah. are included in there? And and so that's, that's something that we were a little confused. We wanna make sure we're accurate when we're, yeah. when we're saying that they're they available. Are they are separate programs that you I don't believe you need to write into your I've never seen them, or at least when the places I've worked, I've never seen them written into ordinance, they exist independent of and so really the question is, is what you are creating in terms of the designation, meet the criteria to make them eligible for the tax credits. And so um, for the for the federal historic tax credits, um, those actually are you have to be listed on the National Register or eligible for the National Register um, or in a National Register district, a contributing property in a National Register district. Um, and so that's that's the trigger there. I, I would also say tax credits, the federal tax credits are something that are really intended for larger projects. Smaller projects certainly can use them but they just aren't as economically advantageous um, as they are to, you know, sort of a million dollar or $2 million rehab, because essentially what you're able to claim is 20% of the value of the rehab. So anything that is focused on the rehabilitation of the property, any cost, so that could be installing a new boiler to rehabbing the windows, but it doesn't include building a new kitchen addition on the back, you know, so what they're what are called your qualified rehab expenses 20% of those you can claim as a tax credit against your personal taxes, um, but it's only for commercial properties and so 
it has limited we, we what we have found and particularly within our like main street communities it has limited applicability for um for smaller projects where you're talking about you know a 50 or a hundred thousand dollar rehab um it's just not as it's just not as beneficial to them okay but it's still a tool and then the state is so new. Do we know much about how this is? No, working? the state is so new and so incredibly competitive um, that I'm not sure that it would actually be something that, again, it's it's going to be probably um, it, unless they are making an, an, an concerted effort to ensure that it's kind of distributed to small towns. I think the concern is that it's going to be eaten up by some a handful of big projects in the bigger cities. I believe they also built into the state credit um, certain requirements for low income and also for projects that help produce affordable housing. And so, you know, they're really trying to build in some extra sort of social responsibility and public um, public benefits and public outcomes to help um, with the, the state tax credit. So if there are those kind of components, I don't know downtown Ohio if there are properties that also include housing components to them, but you know, that might make them a little bit more eligible um, or able to get in the line for the state tax credit. There's also, um, you know, I, I mean, the, you also could consider ways to, this is, this is entirely the city's decision. I don't know if this is something that you've ever discussed, but I've worked with a number of communities where they also do either forms of technical assistance or kind of small business grants um, to help them with like, they could, we call them facade grants. So people who are doing these five to $10,000 kind of either refresh or, you know, smaller projects where you're really talking about trying to redo an entrance or to, you know, replace a window or a, a storefront that was, you know, redone 40 years ago, those kinds of things to help smaller business owners do those kinds of projects and, and even provide some technical assistance in terms of access to local architects could help give them some guidance, um, which I, you know, I think that's always helpful as Lucas showed, you know, whenever you can have staff or some kind of professional engagement ahead of time to help people understand the, you know, what might be the best direction for their project and what's most likely to be approved by the commission. That's always helpful on the front end because the last thing you want is for them to come to you and then feel like they're being asked to meet as you know, a whole set of requirements that they feel like they were blindsided by. Chris, so it, 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 it seems Gina, Gina our... just before you move on to something, I just wanted to ask a question about what you just discussed, Chris. Mm -hmm. Could you talk a bit about the Main Street programs and how that might apply to us and, and offset some of those yeah. costs? Yeah, yeah. So, well, the Main Street program is a, it's a membership program. It's through our National Main Street Center. At this point, there are over 2,000 small communities around, I think it's now up to like 2,500 small communities around the country um, that are members of the Main Street Network. It, and like I said, it is a membership program, but it's centered around kind of four key principles. And it was, it's actually inspired, it's over 40 years old now, it was inspired um, by small towns in the Midwest that were struggling economically in ways to help incentivize the rehabilitation of those and the re revitalization of those struggling downtowns that were seeing all of their businesses, all of their foot traffic move to the malls. And so how do we bring our historic downtowns back and, and sort of make them appealing and appealing places for businesses and visitors again? And so it's focused around four principles that really have to do with the architecture and the history but also the businesses, how do you do business retention and business, business attraction and business retention. It's also put a whole events component. So how do you activate your downtown on a regular basis? Um, and and it's, a, it's also a very much a volunteer driven program. So you create a, you establish a main street district and then so you kind of define the boundaries of your, of your main street and then you establish a, a, a volunteer board that usually has a paid staff person. And that's then what they do is manage that Main Street District and provide support to all of the businesses and all of the properties within that district with those goals in mind. How do you make this a, a vital, vibrant, functional place that is full of business and full of activity and, and, and is, is sort of economically active as well as being, a, once again, a kind of center for the community. 
And I can happy to send you some links afterwards to our, our National Main Street program. They do an enormous conference every year. They give out awards. And during the pandemic, they have been doing an enormous number of making an enormous number of different kinds of grants themselves to support small businesses, to support entrepreneurship, to support people, um, business owners of color. So they have been putting in a huge amount of small grants out into the world um, as a part of, to those folks who are members of the Main Street Network. So our best benefit that we can do when we are thinking of writing code for a district would be to make think future and um, make it so future federal or future state um, incentives or tax things we um, are eligible for. It doesn't mean we're going to get it, but we write it in a way that it doesn't disqualify us for these things if they happen to come up along the yeah. way. And then what we focus with with um, property owners it are, is, not, is, is um, besides Mills Act, is more uh, smaller things and uh, things that are incentives, things that are uh, grants, things that are applicable to them for their projects that may not be as, as grandstanding gigantic projects, but they're important to our community. And so that is where our focus should be. It's not so much these tax, uh, federal and, and state tax grants as much as it is the the low, the low um, independent grants mm -hmm. incentives programs, free things, free resources, all those kind of things that are out there. Yeah. And, and I think it's, it's always helpful if there's someone I, if there's someone within the district or someone within Ojai who has actually used those programs before so that you can talk to them about what their experience was, how did it go for them? I worked in, in Duluth, Minnesota for years that had a, a huge historic district and a num hundreds of eligible buildings, but no one had ever used the tax credit because they were like, a lot of people's perspective was, I don't wanna have to deal with the government. It's more trouble than it's worth. Um, and, and so really it, they, what they needed was a couple of people who had been through the process and could say, oh no, this is how this worked for me. I found this to be highly beneficial. So I don't know if there are folks in Ojai who have used the Mills Act or have used the, the federal tax credit yet, but if so, they would be good people to talk to about their experience and whether they would recommend it to others. Because it, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna lie, like some people have found it to be incredibly complicated. Like it's a very administ it's money from the government. So it's it's free money from the government, but that means that there's an administrative commitment to it. And so, you know, people, sometimes people don't feel like the, what they had to do in terms of paperwork was worth the amount of money that they received. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Chair Aikens. Yes. I know we're deeply engrossed in this conversation. I'm loving this Q and A, but I do know, and I, I want to make sure that you're aware that there is an opportunity for public comment yes. with this ah. item. So I just want to make sure that we're it's, We're aware of that, and I don't know if there's anybody online that would want to um, provide comments as okay. well, but I wanted well, to... yes. Next. Yep. Yes, I took, I took this as a presentation, and... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure where where those wires got crossed. So. Uh. Oh no, no, I'm I'm not talking about <laughs> anything to do with you, Christina. That it's uh, internal ah. uh, uh, procedure that I'm talking about. So. We have a very patient uh, public speaker, uh, public comment person in uh, actually sitting with us who's we're aware of, so. Okay. Well, uh, and I also don't wanna, I'm, I'm cognizant of the time that it's, you know, that it's 8.15 already and you still have other items on your agenda. So yeah, um, th th really I was looking at this as kind of an introduction and happy to answer questions that you have now, but also you can look at me as a resource. And as you think about this, discuss amongst yourselves, if there are things that you would like to pursue, if there are ways that I can help, you know, provide more information or answers to you based upon the, places that I've worked and the, the, the people, the resources that I know, I'm happy to do that. And especially if you are interested in pursuing one of our grants, I'm more than happy to direct you to those resources and help you with that application process yeah, too. Thank you, that's, that's what I was hoping for. And we actually have a business that's offered to match the grant for us. Oh, fantastic. So we're in good shape there. And um, the, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about our public comment person, but hopefully you answered some of the questions that 
one of the business owners who's here to comment had asked me similar questions and I didn't have all the information, so which led me to talking to David Ford to get to you. So thanks for that. So hopefully, you know, some of the information that she provided tonight was, that Chris provided was valuable to you, Barbara, mm -hmm. I hope. But I, I do love uh, your being here. I'm, the format of the Q&A has been very beneficial to us, uh, led by uh, Gina and Jenny and uh, Cindy to, to my right. Uh, to have you in our meeting is informative and uh, enlightening and energetic and uh, helpful to know that we have someone that we has offered to, to reach out to us and to support us instead of flailing it in the dark and uh, uh, doing a whole bunch of Google research that doesn't necessarily <laughs> get us anywhere close to where we would like to be. Oh, it's, I'm, so I, I'm happy yeah, to join I just, you. I just want to say I agree that um, it's very, you know, reassuring that we have a resource that we can, you know, look to and contact on, uh, you know, these really quite intricate programs that are going on that, you know, we can inform the public about and that we can benefit from as a city. Mm -hmm. No, I'm like I said, I'm, most people I don't think even realize that there is a national trust person out here in California. So that was also part of it, just to introduce myself to, to all of you um, through thanks to Cindy and let you know that I'm here. Um, but yeah, it sounds, I, I don't, I don't think you are flailing around in the dark. It sounds like you've already done a lot of really good thinking about what you can do and how you, sh how you should be doing it in a way that's most responsive to the people that you know within your own community. And, and I, it, it, that's really the best advice I can give you. I, you know, there are, like I said, a lot of templates out there. I've watched a lot of communities, a lot of organizations say, oh, we just need to follow this approach. And then at the end, they still have a bunch of angry, misinformed people, but they're like, but we did, we had the meeting and we created the document and we sent it and we posted it. And it's like, it's all about the relationships. It's all about making sure that you, people feel like that they have been heard and that you are taking their concerns into consideration. And so I, I wish I had a silver bullet for you, but to the extent that there is one, I think that that is it. And, and that means a lot of kind of hard, like one-on-one -on -one work, um, but that's probably the most reliable way to get to um, a positive outcome. Yeah, and, and it is less than 60 people. So, oh. I mean, it's not, yeah. it's not that. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, that's the voting. I mean, there's also merchants and, and people who stakeholders for all many reasons. And you want them informed as well. But as far as um, the, the voting, it does come down to less mm -hmm. than six. So, yeah. you know, we, we just have to uh, make sure everyone is heard. Yeah. And I will say, taking somebody, well, maybe, maybe this crosses a line. I don't want to get you all in trouble, but you know, just even meeting two or three people for coffee um, has, has, I have seen that solve more problems <laughs> in my life than just about, uh, you know, than, than a whole website um, full of information. So. All right. Thank you so much. Sure. Well, keep me posted. If as, as you proceed, let me know if you have other questions or if, if there's other uh, ways that, that I or the trust can be of assistance, just know that we're here for you. Thanks. And you're certainly you. welcome to come and visit us in person. Yes. Oh, I love Ohio, as I told you. I, I would, if there was a way. Cindy has a guest there, house. I have the guest house. Yeah. Come on down. No, if I could have been there in person, believe me, I would have. It's one of my favorite places to visit. So okay. I will take you up on that on the, uh, someday. Great. And, and got to see that that theater, too. So can't wait. Yeah. Thank well, you very much, Christina. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Well, that was wonderful. Okay. Public comments. Come on, public comments. <laughs> okay. Please. Okay. Thank you, Barbara, for your patience. And yeah, no, no, I um, I listened to Christine. She's very informed. Uh, she talked a lot about transparency. And by the way, if you're listening, Christina, thank you. Uh, she talked a lot about transparency. However, I think that that's, it's not particularly transparent 
when you hire people that particularly go out to sell people on something. In other words, transparency is having two sides giving you all the downsides and all the upsides of something equally published every time, and really the downsides, mm -hmm. and really the upsides. Her upsides were interestingly not that good. I'm listening to this with, you know, open, trying to think. And the problem is, number one, we are not economically depressed in this town. We don't have buildings that have to be refurbished and rebuilt. If a something comes for lease, it's rented in two minutes. We are thriving. The town is booming. The merchants are booming. We are very different than middle America that they have to revive those towns. We are on a roll. We're on a big, and we're on a roll without the El Roblar yet. Remember, the El Roblar makes a huge difference. So my feeling is that the ones that you are historical already, they are historical. And I think that all of us who are not historical and to be put into a historical corridor, I have gone to two meetings now. I went to the Planning Commission and I've got tonight. Both of those meetings convinced me I never want to be in the historical corridor. Why? They were painful. Planning Commission puts people through a sieve just like historical does. I mean, they ground those El Robler piece. I mean, somebody was asking, a man who has a company in Los Angeles is one of the key decorators who understands period, time, decor more than anybody, and somebody from the planning was asking them that they didn't see a light fixture they need to see. Like they would know that person would even understand the light fixture, whereas the person that's doing the interior decor knows everything about the period, the time, and why they're doing it. So well informed. I mean, and then each person, the, the people running the hotel had the background. So the thing is, and we had David here going over this lighting thing. I don't want to go through that. I mean, I'm going to have to go if I ever develop the property, and I can't imagine shoot me in the head if I ever thought I was going to develop that downtown property, because after these two meetings, I'd kill myself before I'd go through any of these processes. They are so painful. So let's say everybody has to go through planning, and then they go through historical preservation. That's a lot. Those are painful, painful things. I watched the El Robler people crawling the wall that night, and they were trying to get another $40,000 out of them. They finally got off of that. I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed for the planning to even go there. It wasn't everybody, but there was a couple people that were pushing that. So I get really uncomfortable in these meetings, take myself aside and watch these issues of these other people. It's painful. So now how do you go and sell someone like me who has three pieces of property, and I'm only going to get one vote. That right off the bat is not fair. Why, would I get, why wouldn't I get three votes? I have three separate property taxes. Why would I only get two votes or one vote? I should have all three votes, because my opinion is more relevant three times than the person that has one. I mean, I, it's just not fair. If you're going to set this up, you have to be fair. If you're going to be transparent, you have to be transparent and fair. So right off, limiting my voting ability on this is not fair. And right away, I think that you're trying to go in and cripple me. Why are you trying to cripple, cripple me? If this is the greatest thing that can happen to the merchants, not the merchants, but the landowners in Ojai, then you don't have to cripple them. They'll all go for it if it's great. Why I think Christine is wonderful and well-informed. She didn't say anything in there that may, other than the fact that I will be dead in 50 years, and whoever has the property, they, it, this is going to put a, a real stamp on them so they can't do anything you know, that's out of the look or the feel. But by the way, my properties aren't even historical. They're those little stores, those little stores whose image I created. I did the rock work. I did the blue awnings. I did the blue trim. None of that existed before I did it. They were ugly little slump stone buildings. And the same with uh, down where Dansky is. So I created what would be considered historical. But there's nothing historical about it. I don't want an historical corridor. I don't want to be sitting here jumping up and down in my seat thinking, oh my god, this is so painful. I don't th and I don't think anybody that's really come to town, other than the topa topa with the red neon lights, I mean, somebody should have helped them there and told them that that was like a red, fl what'd you say, a red flag to a bull? It really was. But anyway, I mean, this town has done a pretty good job. I mean, she said that well, everybody says it. But the truth is, how many times has it changed hands? And each person that comes through gets the planning commission puts them through it, right? 
I mean, and I don't think you can find, oh, and by the way, I wanted to bring this up because I've wanted to talk about this for some time. The little store, the library store next to my two stores, there was an opportunity to do something great there. But because we were going to stay exactly historical, the columns that were put out front were the exact columns that were built originally. They're oversized for the building, architecturally, and one of them is smack lined up with the front door, which function way wise is terrible. There was an opportunity there for the Historical Preservation Committee to step out of the box, even though you're supposed to preserve it. Are you supposed to preserve something that's not good? Because that was not good architecture. So you have these giant fat columns which don't fit the size of the building. There was a great example where someone should have stepped in and say, hey, we have an opportunity here. Let's make this better than it was. So anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sounding like I'm haranguing you guys. But you know, I know that you, know, you work really hard at what you do and for the hotel and for the theater and that. But you know, I'm giving you the, uh, the guy sitting out here in the audience, the guy getting beaten up, the guy. And I don't want to be beaten up. I really don't. I mean, it's just so uncomfortable to watch people get beaten up. And I don't want to be one of them. So that's, that's why I listened to her, and I really liked her. But she didn't convince me. So thank you. Uh, you're welcome. And just to reply to the comment on the voting, the voting is being uh, done per the code. The code is changed by the city council, not by the Historic Preservation Commission. So the city council made that thing that we, the city council created the thing that only, a property only got, owner got only two votes? They did. In February and March of 2019, I sat through both hearings. I wonder why. Is this not fair? I mean, it's just not, this is voting on anything. Uh, I, I'm, just, I'm just giving you the information. Is this on all, thing, any issue that comes up, property owners only? This is only for historic districts. Sounds odd. Okay. Well, Thank if you. you'd seen the uh, if you'd seen the rules before when Terramina went through them, you'd know what really is odd. So this is this is a clarification from okay. that one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So uh, again. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the clarification. You're welcome, Barbara. Thank you for uh, staying here, and uh, you know I you know I was here all four hours and thirty minutes of last Wednesday night too you were because. Here too. I know you were. I was because we yeah, we night. go where the historic preservation good night. can help or try to help. Good night. Thank you both. Okay. Okay. So continuing on with item number four. Um, thank you, Gina. Thank you, Jenny. Um. Uh, a couple things. You're welcome. Uh, a, a couple points of interest. So we, I went through the uh, the spreadsheet. The, actually, it's a Google Sheet that was uh, created by the ad hoc committee. Then I uh, took that on and worked with uh, Lucas and with. Uh, Cheryl Davis and Sherry and uh, others that were behind the scenes in getting the uh, property parcel information together. And so we, we, we got that. Then I went through uh, with Cheryl Davis to count what the number of votes actually are uh, <coughs> and a lot of intricacies in that uh, makes it very complex. Again, it goes back to the, the voting, the parcels, the businesses. I, so, I just want to clarify something. We keep calling it a vote, but it's it's not necessarily a vote. It's nomination forms, and oh, it's, it's it, well, versus versus an official vote. It's okay. not like it's not like this is going on an official ballot. So okay, it's a so they so we are going to need the actual number of people who will be making a nomination, either upwards or downwards, is fifty seven. That number was verified with uh, Cheryl Davis before she left, so we had a, agreement on that. There was one, and then I took the. Uh, the, com there were some parts that were confusing based upon the names of the owners and the way that they were um, set up as a business. And so I talked to Matt about that last week, and I think we have now fixed with the, uh, with the 57 votes. That's why I was indicating uh, 
to Barbara that she had a different number than what she was saying. Um, so the number is 57. Uh, not, not that the number of nominations need, uh, the number of people that can offer a nomination, 57. Uh, therefore, we would need uh, 29 positive nominations at a minimum, I believe, to move forward with the downtown historic district. Again, keep in mind to go forward, we need a 50% uh, plus one nominations in the positive to then, if it does reach that point, it goes to council and then another vote is taken and to have a no vote is 50% plus one to have a, a negative. It's 50% 50, 50 plus one to uh, say that they are registering a no, a negative uh, uh, towards that nomination. So uh, the other thing is I talked to Matt last week. Uh, he is getting together the, he did a fine uh, PowerPoint presentation to us uh, last month. That was excellent. I talked to him and he is getting together the actual procedures and the ballots uh, that will uh, be used in in order to do that nomination. He hoped to have it to us tonight, but was in, unable to do that. So he anticipates getting that to us next week, Lucas. Okay. Um, the other thing uh, I had asked Lucas about uh, information, comments, guidance to us on streamlining the policies within the downtown historic district. Um, this goes to, as an example, the uh, Mills Act. We were, we've talked about uh, simplifying the Mills Act instead of doing a full historic report that there be some lesser report. I watched that meeting again this last week. I'm tired of meetings, uh, as I'm sure you both are. Um, so uh, do you have anything to share with us along those lines? Uh, nothing tonight. Okay, but is that something that that you can work uh, and and present to us? So just just to clarify, you're asking for the process, f the existing process for historic, for the Mills Act. Is that what you're asking for? No. When I, well, possibly. I, I'm just wondering w amongst the code, amongst the overlays that we have, we keep talking about trying to make within once the downtown historic district is put in place or in moving towards that that we look at simplifying the, uh, the, policies, the policies that are in the code. Because right now we have three overlays and we're gonna do it, we're proposing a downtown historic district. We don't want four overlays for the same property. We'd like to, how can we simplify that? So it's more of a question of what the current standards are as it applies versus what would happen if a historic district was to be be overlaid onto those specific properties. Yeah, could could we then simplify issues, simplify items that are within that downtown historic district to one simplified overlay, be it rather than having three or four different ones that are impacting these properties. Yes. Okay. So so that's what we're looking for as ideas okay. on that because you you know the code. Right, the codes and the policies yeah. and the procedures, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I used to tell people in Little League, I, they want to make an exception, I would say, here's a rule book. If you want to make exceptions to the rules, you have to know what the rules are. Here's your rule book. Go look and then come back and we'll talk to them. I knew what the exceptions were, but they had to do their work first. Um, Okay, so we, the other thing is, I, I'm, again, my poor wife. Um, so uh, uh, Jenny and Gina have uh, uh, laid out the uh, 30 questions that we got today. Um, can the two of you just go over what has changed since uh, what, the last meeting? Because I know formats have changed and, as well as some of the uh, guidance and just as a point of of I want to make sure because this wasn't the piece that you're about to start talking about wasn't in the packet for for tonight um, Commissioner not pre-board uh, McHatton could you share your screen do you have access to that 
document where you can share the screen and kind of talk through some of those. Um, one second, I'm on full screen right now. I've got to go look for it. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I just want to make sure that no, no, it was you the same. I, You're yeah, I'm sorry. I can share. I can share screen now. Let me go over to Perfect. share screen. Um, I know there's nobody in the audience, but we do have copies here at City Hall if anybody's interested. Mm -hmm. Everybody see it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the main um, changes are number 27, all the way down here. Um, this, you can see that's not in bold. It's not, <laughs> I just realized the question was in bold, but I'm not going to look at that right now. But um, this was from... Matt, these are, I didn't change any words. All I did was separate his um, sentences with bullet points. So it was easy to digest. So that was the main change in this. The other change that you'll notice is, um, Gina, it before that you, Gina, let me pa pause just for, so in the, in the last amount, you'll, you saw basically we punted it and we said, we're going to ask Matt for that documentation. So I, I talked to Matt. And this is what Matt sent back, sent back to us. You know, it's interesting with, with this one, I, I had stated, let's stay away from vote, but he specifically puts vote in here. So I, I, I know I, saw, I thought of that when you said that I went back and read it. <laughs> I was like, I, I could have swore I read both there, but we could make that more clear and, and take that out. And <laughs> he uses vote several times. That must be why I've been saying it wrong all this time, huh? And then, and then uh, Gina went through and broke it up into bullet points, which um, is a, uh, a difference from uh, what we saw a month ago. Bullet so there was, there's bullet points. Um, it's just some things were simplified. Um, number two, the question about why we need a, a locally designated district, that was what we were working on. And um, so that is where we are at right now. Um, the thing that Ginny did was she went, old, went old school on it and cut all the questions out and kind of put them on a on a big table and, and tried to group them together and how we want them done. Um, we're thinking that things are introduced and then reintroduced and then like, so we're trying to do it more organically. It's like, okay, this, this, this has this heading. This is what we're talking about. So the document's not going to change. It's just going to be in a different order. So all we're asking for tonight or in our next meeting is that everybody just know that this is the document pretty much finished, except for maybe a typo here and there and the order it will be in. And whether or not we mentioned vote seven times in that one question. <laughs> so that, that will have to be decided. Yeah. yeah and yeah. that disclaimer, I don't know if we need to put that disclaimer on here or how it, you guys want to do that and I, it's not on here yet okay so what, is, what what gina's talking about is the other thing matt sent out to us was a disclaimer that basically uh in this document we state that this document was prepared by an ad hoc committee of the historic preservation commission uh it was reviewed then by the historic preservation commission and uh agreed to but however this has not been uh reviewed by uh by the by staff or by the uh the city council and that was a question that came by because i know early in the process we were talking about this being reviewed by the uh uh city attorney and by the staff and so there was a little bit of a difference in uh in the language that came back from matt and i watched the meeting with the joint council to see exactly what the um resolution was the motion that was put forth by the city council and matt put it forth and basically it said that um that the council was okaying staff to assist with the um historic preservation in getting information out to the public and then on to the city council however taking it on to the city council in no way uh meant that uh an agreement had been reached to uh, uh move towards a downtown historic district uh language in there um i i talked to matt he called me actually while i was buying my drink in uh rainbow bridge 
So here I'm having this complicated conversation by memory in, in town. So the understanding is that uh, we will come to one of the questions that has come, come up is uh, business owners. And I talked with uh, Lucas about this, talked with Matt. So I told him what we will do, and Cindy and I had talked about this today, is we will do all of the work we can if, if in fact, we need business owner information. And Cindy and I actually, having gone through the um, parcels this afternoon, we assigned out, I think I got 24 contacts and she got 21. Um, so we are, uh, we will go through, if we think we need business information, we will between ourselves, Cindy, and maybe float some to uh, see what Jenny may have in, uh, as information independent of us and she can float that through you. That we will work towards getting that information like we got the parcel num parcel information, I then took that using uh, what's called a white pages. It's an app and a, as well as a web website that I'm real, very familiar with because I've done family history for decades in finding dead people and live people. And so I was able to get that information and then translate that to ownership in information for those parcels on people we could contact as well as Cindy and Cindy knows, you know, most of the town anyway. So, and me, I know people who know people. <laughs> so we, so we got a lot of that information by doing that. Uh, so I don't have a problem putting this disclaimer on this, except I would like to acknowledge somehow have it worded in a way that, I mean, this has been a document that's been in front of Lucas, in front of staff, in front of. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll read. And, I'll, Oh. And but it's I just want everybody and the mayor, I just want to know that we've done our do, um, our due diligence. We're not just, you know, we wrote these questions and answers. Aren't they fun? You know, that, that we have done the back end work and we have we have had um, we've asked questions all along the way to make sure of clarity, make sure we're getting it right, make sure there's transparency and, and accuracy. Exactly. And so those are some of the issues I raised with Matt in that I felt like his disclaimer basically said, Oh yeah, they did a great job, but we're, it's not worth being reviewed. And so, uh, we'll we'll reward that based on the conversation I had with Matt today, and then I will run the disclaimer by uh, Matt, and I'll run it by Lucas because I know you and Matt talked also. He said so. Hopefully, we're circling around and, and getting there. Um, and I, I appreciate all of the support, but but at our our in working with staff is. To come to you as an exception and as a verifier, not as someone we need you to, especially understanding that you're short staffed at the moment. Okay. I, I um. So what I want to get out of tonight, I know this is is just to know that this document is just about finished. Um, Jenny and I are going to work on the order and the headings, um, and then the next thing that we're going to be doing is, um, like I was t talking. Uh, this evening is everybody learns differently. So we do want to put together a, a, um, like a 10 minute um, slide presentation that, um, that tells more information. Um, not the one that we did for joint council, because it really wasn't applied to everyone. And we've learned a lot more information since then. And the boundaries are different. So we want to, we want to work on that next. And so we'll have those to bring to the next meeting as well. Great. And, and so uh, completing that is, you know, we were trying to get this out and to you uh, in time for review and then also taking in, in account comments that Christina uh, made insightful comments to us. Uh, I, th this is, we're waiting on, we have, Cindy and I have not contacted anybody yet uh, other than I contacted twice sold tells that uh, Barbara was talking and I had a rebuttal, but I swallowed that. Um, and uh, so that's the only one I have. I reached out to them because I'm worried about that's a group, an organization. I know John Lambert, I called him. We're trying to get them scheduled so we don't talk to them and go, oh, you just missed it by that much in our next board meeting in, in two weeks or two months. So we're trying to hit that off a little bit. So th that's the only one I contacted. We've been waiting to contact people until we have this. So my question is, is there a way to get these talking points uh, approved by the Historic Preservation Commission before 
without waiting for another month. Do you have any thoughts on that, Lucas? Um, I do want to say that they have been gone through thoroughly with each member already. And all of every time somebody says something, we go through it, we um, adjust, we change, you know, I mean, so everyone has been heard in this document. So I, I think that as far as a, if it doesn't need to be formally approved, I, I feel confident that everyone has looked at this thoroughly at this point. So I don't know if it does need to be approved or not. So here's here's my two cents on this. Okay. And it's it's I think there's some simplicity to this. So to Commissioner McHatton's point, this has been before the commission three meetings? This is the third. Yes. This is the third meeting. The right? third in de depth detail. Detail discussion. Yes. Are there any changes that you're seeing tonight? Uh just can I answer that? From two and 27 and that it's bullets. And whatever was told from the last time from Cindy, she had like, and, and you, Lucas, as well, take out this sentence, take out that sentence, and Matt, everything was just, it, it, I went back and read, listened to that meeting two more times to make sure everything that Matt said, everything you said, everything Cindy said reflected into this document as well. So those are the changes. The changes are what um, what what everyone asked for. Okay, and Cindy has a Thank comment. Thank you. Um, first of all, this is the first time I'm seeing this, so I haven't been able to read through it. Um, you know, even though I know these are minimal changes, thank you, from the last time. But also, to the point of approval, this is an informative document. It's not a legal document. It's, it's general information for people, you know, there's no specific items in here about specific tax credits or what you get. It's general information. And so there can be a caveat at the bottom, you know, whatever that wording is from Matt, this is an informative document. This is not legal advice. This is not a contract. This is general information prepared by an ad hoc committee. Q&A. Yeah. I think that is just the small print at the bottom. It could be big print. I don't really care. But you know, that's what this needs. This is not a legal document, and it's not a consent item. It's basic information prepared by a volunteer And it's a working committee. document as, as well, you know. Yeah, but, but it's basic information prepared by a volunteer commission, an ad hoc committee, you know, for the community. And that even could be in the wording. So there's that. To inform. Yes. It's not a legal document. I agree with that. Okay, then. What was the other question? Was there another know, question? There was another question, but I'm not sure what <laughs> it is now. Give me a second. Oh, I had a third. Yeah, that was my scent. Yeah, he had one. Oh, yeah, my, my second scent is oh. in regards to, okay, so if there are no changes in terms of, of what's, what's moving forward here, then the commission can just be comfortable with it moving forward as is. The organization of the numbering, it sounds like, the ad hoc that's been working on this wants to still look at the renumbering, but that doesn't change the context of what's Yeah, but we accept the basic information. Here. You know, the information on the pages is, 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 has been reworked and worked, and it's very acceptable. And the refinement of the order is, does not affect the information. Right. Good? Um, I would like to, you know, accept the information as, you know, you guys just described, but, you know, with permission to um, kind of regroup and reorder and maybe um, lay it out in different ways. And one of the things that our guests suggested is, you know, categorize it for different audiences. Um, rather than having this long list of 30 questions. And as I already said, you know, a lot of them are kind of have a negative yeah. approach. So, you know, there, I, I cannot agree to that. There are not any more changes. There are changes, but, you know, I can't agree and hope that the, you know, group will, you know, accept this as basic knowledge, exactly what you guys just said. But I think there's a lot of, especially after our guests speaking, there's a lot of 
uh, communication issues and tweaking and um, that I think needs to be done. And I think that with, you know, our volunteer as a local designer who's willing to help us, which, which I hope that we have approval on, you know, we can work on, you know, those, you know, very subtle things, but the information itself, you're right. We've gone over and over and over. I think that's what we need to agree on tonight, that the information isn't going to change. The questions might be um, worded slightly differently, but it's still going to, the answer is still going to answer the question. Or as that said, I don't know if that even <laughs> I said that right. But, and, and they just will be regrouped and maybe broken up into smaller documents. But the, the, there's nothing in this document that the, the answers are going to have the same things that everyone approved and discussed over and over again. It's how they're presented is what's going to change. Mm -hmm. I, I also feel that, you know, if, if Lucas and the city and, and Matthew are not going to um, support this as a part of a city document that it, you know, it becomes a very different discussion. You know, if, if, if this is as, you know, Lucas says, an, an ad hoc division of HPC, blah, 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 you know, who came up with these answers for the public, then that's one thing. So where really are we on this information? Do, you know, Matthew's trying to say that, you know, it kind of hasn't been reviewed and it kind of, you know, we know that it has and, and, I think stepping back a little bit from well, supporting Jenny, this. Yeah, Jenny, uh, it, it's not, a, 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 so again, this goes back to the conversation with uh, with Matt and uh, and Lucas too. Um, at, at Rainbow it, it Bridge. Is, it is, it, it, <laughs> we are the proponents that are putting this forward, okay? Uh, by the council vote, uh, we the staff was allowed to give us support in that, but not in a way that makes them a part of being the proponents. Okay, so Matt is just that's what Matt's I think where Matt's trying to draw the line. Uh, with with Matt, he's he's fine with us uh, sending this out. He's been in I think two out of three of the meetings, um, and knows the diligence that we took in that. So. It's not that they don't disapprove of the document, not that they don't support there being a document. It is just trying to keep that line in them not being pulled in as uh, part of the, as the, uh, essentially the, one of the proponents for doing this. Right, that remaining neutral, correct? I think, is, the, is the, the term that you're drawing a line in the, in the sand. It's really ensuring that, that, that staff is remaining neutral, as if anybody else, any other body like for instance with Taramina right we weren't staff wasn't going out and and doing due diligence we were still remaining a neutral body and I think that's what we've got to make sure we do here as well yes exactly mm -hmm. so so I, again Jenny that was my feeling at the beginning uh, when I you know saw the disclaimer I, I said to uh, Lucas in the conversation that we had last week yeah no that just why would you put down and put that down there? Someone's going to look at that and go, "Hey, nobody trusts you. They don't. Even the city and attorney don't trust you." That's not the message that was trying to be conveyed. So, um, I, you know, as has been said, this information is a rearrangement essentially of information that we've seen, other than the areas that uh, Gina uh, said. Uh, if we continue to uh, you know, I'd just like to be, be able to get a document that uh, we agree to and uh, us starting reaching out and talking to these individuals. Yes, I feel comfortable that when you and Cindy and Jenny are out there talking to the public, that whatever's in this document is accurate and approved by the um, five of us that we've all gone through it. Is that pretty accurate? I mean, I don't want you to hold up being having a conversation with somebody because this is not has not gone whatever this has to happen tonight with this document. Just in telling and are moving forward with this. 
Can I stop sharing or do you still want to see it? I don't think you need to share it anymore. Yeah, I don't think you need to share it. I think, I think it's... they're moving on. Yeah. Thanks. So just to sort of understand what I think we're all talking about is that the document is, we like all the content. We're happy with the content. Some of the wording is going to change, like a little more positive, what we learned from Chris tonight, some of her suggestions. Jenny, you want to incorporate? Come back, Jenny. And um, <laughs> Gina, you're talking about rewording. <laughs> yes, yes. You I know, think, uh, I reordering. Think and the questions could, you know, benefit from a little more um, ordering. I agree with you there. But I think the basic information we agree on maybe incorporating some of Chris's presentation, not informational, but presentation <laughs> wording and reordering this and just maybe streamlining it in certain ways, but the information stays the same, right? Yes, in theory, in, you know, conceptually, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, conceptually. Yes. I think that's what we're talking about. Okay. Gina, are you good with that? Sorry, I had to take care of my dog. Uh, yes, okay. I am. Jenny, are you good with that? Yeah, yeah, I am good with that. I also just want to reiterate that, you know, I've, you know, reached out to, you know, a communications person who's part of our neighborhood. And, and I think that there are some subtle, you know, changes, not changes, but just presentation wise whatever that can, and language that can be softened that I think is important. I do not want someone to scan in a code and come to a, a white page with typed one through 30 questions, you know, that basically mostly begin with won't, you know, so, so what I would like to hear from everyone is just approval for Gina and I to move forward with developing this document into, you know, a, a, a more family friendly uh, document. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I would just if there are uh, any changes that are substantial or even smaller that are uh, critical to the conversations, you know, I realize that this document should uh, change or, you know, as we talk to different people, we're going to get different concerns that maybe we didn't understand. And so we're going to, this uh, document should be sensitive to that, those concerns and that information. I just ask that if there are uh, substantial changes or critical changes that it be forwarded through uh, uh, Lucas and staff back to us with uh, an understanding of what those are to where if there is a, a disagreement by a commission member, then we would uh, find a way to resolve that commission. Yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah, and I can tell you right now, the only um, thing that I would like to work on with Ginny, as far as something that might be pushed through all of you, is to focus a little bit more on resources and, and grants, um, because I think that's something that's more relative from having her explain to us that it's it's more something like, you know, doing a doors or windows or an opening or, you know, entrance or something like that, rather than these large scale projects that um, it would be so many hoops to jump through for those kind of things, which is versus these grants that are available and resources. So I think that um, having a little bit more of an understanding of that and a focus on that in a question would be good because those are actually things that people will probably be utilizing more than um, the bigger scale stuff. Yeah, and, and Cindy, Cindy recognized that in her comment, I, she was, uh, talking to Lucas that if we're in, we've all heard what uh, uh, Christina said, so we're all a part of that. So if you're incorporating comments that she said, mm -hmm. then I think that's acceptable to each of us because each of us were yeah. in that conversation. Yeah. And can I, I make a suggestion? I, I mean, I'm very familiar with the Main Street program, but I wanted her to t explain it. So maybe I would learn some, some new information. The National Trust Main Street Program, Benjamin Moore provides paint, you know, there are all these benefits, but I, I think rather than spelling all that out, it's it's something along the lines of the Main Street Program at the National Trust supports Main Street's 
with grants and other fantastic programs for more information, go here. You know, it's a sentence and then it's a reference. And that way people can go and spend two hours staring at their computers. You know, I just feel like that's where, the, that's where people need to be directed in this document. This is where, what we can benefit from, and this is where you learn more about it. Because we're not going to be able to spell all that out. Yeah, and I think that is kind of where I imagined this document in the very beginning was the, um, well, like on our city website, the, um, the way Sherry has it where, you know, you have the information, you have the date and the architect and everything, but then you have the link. And if you're really into it, you can click on that link and read the entire HRR. Um, that's for a select few that want to read it. It's there. And I think that's the expandable thing with links and things for people who really do want to dive deep. But for people who don't, having it just be these bullet points that just get the correct information out there. Sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Dear sweet wife. Um, huh? Yep. <laughs> I'm out of town tomorrow. We're supposed to shop for everyone coming s Saturday. Um, okay. Uh, information items, future agenda items. Ah. Are we going to be trying to make a, nom a nomination in May? Or for what? I just, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> what what's our next thing that we have to do? I would just like to see May, June, July, all of those having something to do with the downtown historic district on future agenda items. So we always know it pops in there. So wherever we're at in there is being I think that's in. getting ahead of where we are. I think we need to start our outreach uh, as Brian. I don't mean that. I just mean general. You know, I mean, I think that's what's that, going to determine the general because it's pretty gray, foggy to me, at least what it's going to look like. Yeah, we went th we but went we through the list of people today, and uh, it's hazy. Thank you. That's I mean, right, but some of these people in, we in, have in May, to. in June, in July, and in August, we're going to want to talk about the downtown historic district in whatever way form it is. It is. I just like to have it on there. You know, so it's an act, so it's an item for discussion every month for the next, you know, what is it, five months there. It just lists it so it does show up. It doesn't fall off anywhere. And then we, oh, no, we can't discuss it because it's not on the agenda. Okay. Um, let's see, May 12th, where I guess we're going to put OI Theater on there, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Theater Light. I think okay. that, yes, definitely that will be added. Um, I also want to just note that while we have all of these items on here, uh, we'll be getting confirmation that they're all going to be ready, but we're putting them on there with the, in, with the intentions that they will be ready to go. Okay. So, okay. but you can expect all those one might get pushed to June, mm -hmm. but right now we're looking at all of those. Okay. It, mm -hmm. it feels like a heavy agenda, but the items themselves, once we start unpacking them, I think there's some simplicity to them. Yes, and as for item number one, slap down somebody. The tennis courts, tennis yes. Courts. I, we can't speak. I know Matt's not here. We don't have a city attorney, but we can't speak about these specifically or go into the yeah. details. Just know that uh, nothing they're... Nothing specific. Yeah, I, I agree. Just, thank you. Brian. Thank you. Fact finding. Okay. But then I learned something in his response, so... I'm not talking. I'll share it with I, you. I, I'll share it all with you next year, next <laughs> month, but not now. Adding adding downtown historic district discussion to each of these um, future agendas is what we'll be adding that to the agenda, so yes. you see them for future. We we just yep call it DTHD since we got tired in the ad hoc committee of <laughs> typing downtown historic district <laughs> four hundred times. Actually, I I made a conscious choice uh -oh. to to change it to. The downtown Ojai historic district, because that is the way the state of California refers to us. And it seemed really strange that we reversed it. Okay. And so on this document, I think it was one, it's in one of our minutes because I, I watched the thing. We did talk about how it made more sense to do what they do. So it's actually dope. <laughs> D-O-H-D. You're home. -D. We're here. It's yeah. nine o'clock. Yeah. We're going. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, listen, is is it is it to 
forward of me to ask that sometime throughout the summer we have the approval of my arcade sign somewhere on this agenda. <laughs> oh, Gina knows. Gina knows that story. Should I say that? Do you have an application in currently? I can't speak to that specifically. I, no, I was rejected. Gina my application was rejected. So I why don't we talk about that offline? I don't want to talk about that right now. And I'm going to reapply. <laughs> and uh, uh, let's yeah, talk about that I, offline. I can't. Yeah. It's it's an item that you're trying to get around. Yeah. No, we can't talk about that right yeah. now. If you want, we can set up a call and we can talk about your application. Talk to Lucas. Let's Thank talk you. about that. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, Okay, yeah, let's see. Look, okay, uh, few, uh, future items. Also, this is under... <laughs> Brian, uh, can, can Brian I, uh, you, you've got to you gotta laugh. It's super late, right? I, I know, but this affects... <laughs> this, this is new information, actually, for you two. So I talked I to Gail... I it. I talked to Gail today, and I know <laughs> you both want to reapply... So you have to get the information to her that you want to reapply. And all you have to do on the email you sent to her is do reply and say, yes, I want to form okay. more Okay, my God, after this meeting, I'm not sure. Let me, get, let me sleep on it. <laughs> <laughs> but by April 29th, or it's going out for a uh -oh. advertisement. So th and that, you, that's my... And uh, who knows? That's okay. my... Uh, Thank you, oh, Brian. And... At least this meeting is an exception. I'll, I'll sum it up with the Hummel House plaque is right there on the outside wall. Looks beautiful. Good job. Oh, Good job. I can't wait. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a bike up to see it All tomorrow. Right. We're talking about meeting adjourned. Yes. Anything else? Click. There's Click. there's something else that will be on um, a future agenda, either the next one or the one after, probably. That's and that not is, me talking. And th this is Mora. Yeah. Associate <laughs> planner. We know. <laughs> Staffed. Poor Mora. <laughs> I sent everyone. Um, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, Brown Act um, and training. Yeah. And that's something that you're doing on your own. The, it, oh. the training came with a message telling you that you're going to be doing that on your own mm -hmm. time, and then we will put it on an agenda to discuss. And it'll be okay. on the May 12th or potentially the June 9th agenda. Okay. Okay. Is okay. there a test? Or is it like the honor system? It, it, is the, it is an honor system, but it'll be discussed and then you'll get a certification. Okay. Ooh, I like the certificate. So, okay. This is, for, this is for Brian and Cindy specifically? <laughs> or is this no, what, what it... This is the Brown Act training. It's just we couldn't hear Myra Mar talk. I we, didn't we, hear it. Yeah. It's... I sent everyone an email um, regarding the Brown Act training and it came with a link and you're to watch the training. It's put on by the city attorney. And then I'm going to put it on an agenda for discussion. And it should be the next agenda, which is May 12th, and after which the commissioners will all get um, a certification, having, thank do you. having done the training. Great. Thank you. OK. okay. Thank you. OK, thanks. <laughs> Good. You got it in there before so <laughs> Yeah. Holy cow. Before I opened my mouth. Good night, everybody. Oh, yes. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.